thanks to all of you for your participation. I suppose that other people are coming. Um, before to start, and this is just some minutes to attend uh, the people. Uh, I give you some instructions for the interpretation. In the first way, we did the Libyan universities only. We faced some problems on the interpretation issues, and now we are giving you some instruction to be sure that all of you will be the right uh, position to be sent as, as, uh, as possible to this uh, webinar. Uh, a service, uh, I, I, ask, I can't ask the interpreters to go in consecutive translation for the beginning of this my explanation. في بداية هذا التوضيحات في البداية فقط نتأكد من أن الجميع يفهم ما أقوله أن خدمة الترجمة الفورية من الإنجليزية إلى العربية متوفرة والعكس أيضا بفضل دعم المفوضية الأوروبية بليبيا Now, instruction, each attendee must select his or his or her language. الفرنسية فرنش أو فرنسي لأن في خدمة الزوم ليس هناك عنوان للغة العربية إذا تجدون على شاشاتكم خدمة زوم تجدون زر الترجمة وعليكم اختيار اللغة المفضلة لديكم العربية أو الإنجليزية والإنجليزية تجدون في القناة التي تحمل عنوان فرنش أو فرنسي وتبقون على تلك القناة وموجات تلك القناة وعلى كل مشارك سيستمع بإمكانه أن يستمع إلى المتحدث عندما يتحدث في اللغة المنتقات أو يستمع إلى المترجم إذا ما كانت لغة المتحدث مختلفة عن لغة المتلقي. على سبيل المثال إذا ما كان المتحدث يتكلم بالإنجليزية وأنت تختار الإنجليزية فأنت لن تستمع إلا للمتحدث. If the speaker is talking in Arabic, you will select the English. You will listen to the interpreter. To listen only to the interpreter and to be sure that only one voice will be heard. عليك أن تضع الصوت الأصلي موضع صمت في زر الترجمة عليك أن تختار اللغة التي تريدها وعليك أن تضع الترجمة أن تضع القناة الأخرى في موضع صمت If an attendee or a speaker wants to enter the discussion, he or she must speak the language that he has learned. The same for the panelist. Panelists will be asked to select the language of their interpretation for local tradition. In the chat, please share your question 
وفي خدمتي النقاشات والرسائل نرجو منكم ارسال اسئلتكم او ملاحظاتكم حتى نتمكن من ذلك لكن نرجو منكم الكتابه باللغه الانجليزيه نرجو منكم ان تكونوا حذرين عند الكتابه وان لا تكتبوا بالعربيه ليس انه ليس بامكاننا ان نفهم العربيه اذا ما كانت لديكم اي مشاكل في الترجمه نرجو منكم ان تكتبوا ذلك في غرفه النقاش وستتولى زميلتي السيده مارتينا فضى ذلك الاشكال اعرف ان هناك من المشاركين بصدد الالتحاق بنا هناك من يطلب التوضيحات وارجو منكم اتباع التعليمات شكرا اعتقد ان جميعنا يستخدم لغته وستستمعون الى الترجمه التعاقبيه Directory to speak the interpretation والآن سأتحدث مباشرة إليكم وتستمعون إلى الترجمة وسأتولى تقديم المقدمة أو مداخلة تمهيدية أولا أود أن أقول شيئا مرتبط بالتقرير الليبي وقبل ذلك Personality that are joining us for this session. To say some special thanks. I want to thank the people obviously to do first of all to the Libyan Minister of Higher Education. The Libyan Minister supported us in all this process. And we have daily contact with them, and I hope that soon we can do something. وأتمنى أن نتقدم في تعاوننا من سوء الحظ مع الوزير ليس معنا اليوم لأنه له التزامات حدثت في آخر لحظة وأود أيضا أن أشكر مفوضية الاتحاد الأوروبي في ليبيا سعادة السفير ومختلف المسؤولين و Some friends with us, national for Libya, and the Mr. Ali Bakir. But I have to also thank all the different universities in Libya. I will describe it later. But all this was not possible. 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 تعرفنا على أشخاص متحمسين ومتمنين أكثر وأكثر بجامعاتهم وبالتعاون مع جامعات الاتحاد الأوروبي. طبعا علي أن أشكر أعضاء فريقي الذين يشتغلون معي ماركو دي دوناتو ماركو سيليا ماركولي ولورانسو باستوريني ووجينيو ماتانيا ومارتينا زيبولي وسترتقون بهم على ابتداء هذا اليوم وكل منهم سيتولى إدارة جلسة وستستمعون إليهم وإلى توصياتهم التي أعطوها وكما تعلمون وكما يعلم أغلبكم أن التقرير إعادة انطلاق الذي قمنا بإعداده منذ سنة 17 والفين لقد أعددنا دراسة ووجدنا إجابات جيدة من الجامعات الليبية وقمنا أيضا بعملنا من خلال البيانات التي جمعناها خلال سنوات الفارطة والتي قمنا من خلالها بتحليل النظري وفقنا مع مفوضية الأوروبية في ليبيا على تنظيم الجلسات على ثلاث مرات لكن حق لسبب متعددة أن لم نتمكن من ذلك وكان علينا أن نؤجل المحاضرة 
ثم جاء كوفيد 19 المستجد والان بدانا في هذه الندوه الافتراضيه الاولى وعلينا ان نقوم بكل ما يمكننا القيام به على الانترنت وعن بعد خاصة وأننا نحن في بداية في نهاية السنة الجبائية والسنة المالية هناك اعتبارين اثنين متيتعلقان بالتقرير لقد وصلتنا عديد الرسائل الإلكترونية تتعلق بالبيانات التي جمعناها وأشرناها وكما قلت هذه البيانات تتعلق ب 17 و 18 و 2000 والتي نشرناها بعد تجميعها مع الأم وهذا يعني طبعا هذه البيانات يجب تحديثها وأعتقد أن في اقتراحي هو أنه علينا أن نقوم بتحديث جميع البيانات المتعلقة بكل جامعة مع نهاية هذه السنة وسنرسل دراسة نحصل على البيانات الجديدة والمحدثة في نعيد المشروع لكن ما يهمنا أكثر هي التوصيات التي قدمناها في تقريرنا وفي التوصيات أشعر أن الأهداف الرئيسية لهذه الجلسة الافتراضية هو مناقشة التوصيات أكثر عمق لكن نبقى مرتبطين بالبيانات لأنه في نظرنا مع ذلك وعلينا أن نقوم بتحديد هذه البيانات وهذه مساهمتنا بخصوص تحديد وتحسين مقصد التعليم العالي في ليبيا في ليبيا وأوصيكم بمناقشة هذه التوصيات لنرى كيف ماذا سنفعل معا وأن ندرس جميع المسؤوليات الملقاة على عاتق جميع الأطراف وصالة العالم والجامعات وجميع الأطراف الفاعلة العالمية المدعوة للمشاركة في هذه الجلسة الافتراضية Expertise France and okay, DLA, Expertise and France and DLA, and DLA, uh, the main idea of today is to work and to discuss the recommendations and why not. ولما لا التفكير كيف نقوم بتحديث هذا التقرير في السنوات القادمة لنفكر فيما نحن فيه وما يمكن أن نصل إليه مع سنعمله معا لتحديد الحاجيات المستقبلية للإصلاح لإصلاح منظومة التعليم العالي الليبية أتوقف عند هذا الحد في مقدمة في المقدمة التمهيدية لهذا التقرير وسأعطيكم لاحقا بعض المعلومات حول مقترحاتنا لتعسير وتحسين المنظومة التعليم العالي في ليبيا وفي المنطقة وكما قلت في البداية من المصف أنه لم يتمكن معالي الوزير من الحضور معنا نظرا لالتزامات سابقة ومعالي سفير المفاوض في ليبيا أعطي الكلمة سيد جيا وأرجو منه فتح الميكروفون شكرا جزيلا صباح الخير جميعا إنه لم ندع أي سرور أن ننضم إلى شركائنا وأصدقائنا الليبيين Uh, the audio is working, is speaking in Arabic at the moment. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to join our friends and uh, Libyan partners uh, in this webinar. Um, thanks to UNIMED for organizing this. I want to start by. I want to 
أن أسمنا هذا التقرير الذي تم أعداده من قبل إنماد والمفوضية لدراسة التحديات التي تواجهها الجامعة الليبية في ليبيا As is the world over, universities are fundamental pillars. We know all that the university is the foundation of every society in the world. I think we need to recognize that the university is the foundation of every society in the world. I think we need to recognize that the university is the foundation of every society in the world. I think we need to recognize that the university is the foundation of every society in the world. I think we need to recognize that the university is the foundation of every society in the world. I think we need to recognize that the university is the foundation of every society in the world. مسرورون بهذا المستوى الكبير من المرونة ومن القاومة فيما يتعلق بالتقرير أعتقد أنه يضع أفاقا إيجابية أمام الجامعات الليبية I'm really sorry to stop you Could you select your channel as English? هل بإمكانك أن تختار قناة الإنجليزية؟ لأنك بدأت بالعربية ثم تحولت إلى الإنجليزية هل بإمكانك أن تختار زر الترجمة الإنجليزية ثم تقوم بوضع الصوت الأصلي ضمن خدمة صامتة؟ Now your micro is mute أنا الآن الصوت يسيرنا بشكل جيد يقول السيد سكالتسي إلى الترجمة الفورية <laughs> it's very complicated, unfortunately, for Zoom, but it's now, and in the previous, we will listen both. It's very complicated to listen. Now, now it seems to be different. Please go ahead. Um, as I was saying, um, I, I, I think, um, as I said, we've gone through the report, and a lot of problems. العديد من النقاط الإيجابية. Positive prospects for the future of higher education in Libya. Nevertheless, I think we also recognize the continuing challenges. And I think such as this, I'm sure we are all committed to make sure that Libyan higher education is a challenge. Everywhere around the world, universities play a transformative role. دورا تغييريا كبيرا لفائدة شعوبها من أجل التقدم والازدهار ونريد أن تقوم الجامعات الليبية بلعب نفس الدور على نفس المستوى وسنعمل على مساعدتها على مستوى الاتحاد الأوروبي ودول الاتحاد الأوروبي من أجل تطوير المجتمع الليبي ومن أجل تمكين المجتمع الليبي والمواطنين الليبيين من تحمل مسؤولياتهم في الاتحاد الأوروبي فإن التعليم العالي ومنظمة التعليم العالي تلعب دورا هاما ورئيسيا في هذه المرحلة لتطور المجتمعات الأوروبية ونود أن يتم استنساخ هذا التقدم وهذا التطور على مستوى الجامعة الليبية We look forward. نتطلع. Given the past, the history of of Libya, had an impact on on all aspects of society, including the higher education. We need to see Libyan higher education to be the vehicle to connect more. أتمنى أن تتمكن الجامعات الليبية من لعب دورها في خير المجتمع 
LDB ونحن مستعدون لتقديم المساعدة ونحن بصدد بذل جهود كبيرة وحشد الموارد لدعم الجامعات الليبية سنعمل على توطيد العلاقات إلى جانبي هذا المشروع وسنعمل على خلق محاضنة جامعية داخل الجامعات الليبية وهناك عمل دؤوب ينتظرنا وسنعمل عن مع عدد الجامعات التي نراها الأداة الملائمة من أجل تسيد هذه الشراكة وأتمنى أن لا يتوقف تعاوننا مع الجامعة الليبية إلى هنا هناك عديد البرامج كدراسة بلاس وفاق عشرين 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 ثلاثين التي توفر مجالا لتبادل الأبحاث بين الليبيين والأوروبيين بل أيضا تفتح أفاقا أكثر للمجتمع الليبي لفصائل وشرائحي من أجل انعكاس الأفضل على المجتمع الليبي لدينا مسؤول عن برنامج إراسموس من الجانب الليبي ونتمنى أن يعمل هذا المكتب بشكل دؤوب ومتواصل لاستخدام واستعمال جميع الموارد المتاحة كما قلت هناك عدد من التوصيات المتعلقة بتحديث وتطوير منظومة التعليم العالي وسنعمل من أجل تنفيذها وإنجازها والاتحاد الأوروبي له سياسات كبيرة وثرية من أجل إصلاح منظومات التعليم العالي وأعتقد أنه أمامنا عمل كبير مع شركائنا الليبيين أتوقف إلى أتوقف هنا أشكركم على الانتباه وأتمنى لكم التوفيق في أعمالكم وتطلع إلى مزيد إلى على هذه التوصيات من أجل تنفيذها وإنجازها بما في خير ليبيا حتى تتمكن ليبيا من الوصول إلى مستوى أفضل في تعليم العالي شكرا جزيلا وأتمنى أن ألتقي بكم مستقبلا شكرا شكرا معالي السفير أعتبر أن خطابكم وتدخلكم إيجابيا ونتمنى أن ألتقي بكم عن قريب في ليبيا وكما ذكرتم فإن برامج إيراسموس بلاس برامج هامة على الأقل في بداية انتلاق هذا التعاون مع الجامعات الليبية ونحن كيوني ماد نعمل على تطوير ومزيد تحسين التعاون بين الجامعات الأوروبية مع الجامعات الأوروبية الليبية كإيراسموس بلاس وغيرها من أجل تدعيم قدرات الجامعات الليبية ونلعب الدور دائما لدفع الأطراف الليبية والجامعات الليبية وتعميق العلاقات معها وبالنسبة لنا هذه مسألة هامة نتمنى أن نصل إلى نتائج مضمرة وسنعفل على تجربتنا في هذا المجال من برامج إيراسموس بلاس وأذكر أن هذه البرامج برامج أهمة بالنسبة 
التحسين أدائي المجتمع الأكاديمي اللي بخاصة في المجتمع المعرفة أتم أشكركم على مساهمة مفوضية بحث المفوضية الأوروبية في ليبيا لدعم الجامعة الليبية ومنظمة يونيما شكرا مرة أخرى وأتمنى أن ألقاكم مرة أخرى في فرصة اللحقة الآن أعطي الكلمة إلى البرلمان الأوروبي الأستاذ واللجنة العلاقات مع مجموعة الكتل المغاربية بالبرلمان الأوروبي وسيتعدد الأستاذ باللغة الإيطالية وسنتولى توفير الترجمة الفورية للإنجليزية وتولى المترجمون المترجمين تحويل إلى العربي أرجو منك سيدي أن تختار سر اللغة الإنجليزية To guarantee the consecutive translation to stop time by time, if the the possibility to our colleagues to translate into Italian. We will continue to develop the translation to the Arabic. di selezionare l'inglese nel bottone dell'interpretariato e di mettere il mute nell'original audio. E durante il tuo intervento fai delle pause per consentire al collega, al nostro collega. Perfetto, sei pure. La parola a te. Eh, vi, 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 vi segnalo un problema, credo, tecnico, perché io ho un continuo ritorno dell'interpretato in arabo. E nel linguaggio che in inglese non ci sente nulla. Quindi allora, eh, dovresti... è complicato sentire. No, no, proviamo, proviamo, tanto è un problema che è ricorrente, quindi lo dobbiamo aggiustare. Allora, devi selezionare come lingua dell'interpretariato inglese. E questo l'ho fatto. E poi devi fare, c'è un'altra descrizione che c'è scritto mute the original audio. audio. Yes. Fai yeah. mute su questo. Voi mi sentite? Sì, okay. Andrea, piano piano. No. Adesso non lo sentiamo più. È andato sì, sull'altro canale. Gestisco io la... Mi sente, okay. mi sentite. No, non ti sentiamo Andrea. I'm sorry, but we are facing some problem. Just a moment. Allora, ricominciamo, fai una cosa, dal interpretation button sempre, fai un attimo off e ripartiamo da zero. Adesso sentiamo il tuo telefono, quindi che squilla. Eh, sì, infatti... Bene, complicato. adesso ti sentiamo. Sei di nuovo su inglese o hai fatto off? No, sono original audio. Va bene. Allora. Sono su original audio. Non... Ecco. Ti capisco. La vita è, no, no, la la vita è complicata. Allora, eh, e... Siccome no, andiamo no, in consecutiva... No. Dimmi che cosa... Adesso cosa... Mi non ti sentiamo, mi non ti sentiamo. Prova adesso. Mi senti? Prova Mi sentite adesso? Sì, ti sentiamo. No, io non lo sento. Eh, Raniero, per Quale favore, fai... Sta? Scusa, Raniero, fai per favore, eh, togli il mute original audio. Andrea, ci senti? Io vi sento. Ok. Ok, allora proviamo in questo modo. Può essere che avremo qualche allora. problema, ma cominciamo e dai il tempo al collega. Again, <ride> sì, I, I, 
I give you again the introduction. Uh, sorry for the, the, the... Ecco, una cosa l'abbiamo risolta forse, che non forse. sento più forse, non Bene. sento più l'interpretazione in arabo, quindi ti, almeno in inglese ti, 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 ti colgo. Eh, innanzitutto grazie, grazie dell'invito, grazie di questa opportunità. Proverò a restare anche con voi subito dopo, alla, subito alla, dopo l'intervento. Di al Musharaka, figlia, Sento, sono totalmente bloccato da una interpretazione che no, mi viene. No, no, quando ho detto che mi sono detto che mi sono detto che mi sono detto che mi sono detto che mi Andrea, facciamo così. Quando tu senti l'arabo ti fermi, l'arabo poi si ferma e tu continui. Ok, ok, ok. okay. Uh, give, allora, do la stessa istruzione agli, agli interpreti. I perfetto, perfetto. Gli interpreti to translate in consecutive please and time by time to give the floor the time to the speaker to make this intervention and then you will translate thank you that's all right that's all right. Andrea. thank you very much allora um, vi rubo davvero pochi minuti non Grazie si sente questa... non si sente in english ma forse deve unmute il suo microfono. Eh, Francisco, Francisco c'è un problema. Devi, fa, dove, devi fare tu il mute. Devi Ma il mute dov'è? Scusate, io il, il mute io ce l'ho aperto, come normalmente accade con Zoom. Cos'altro devo fare? Eh, tu vai avanti, Andrea, scusami. Chiedo ai country ask people if you have some problem to listen right in the chat, not in the by mic, please. إذا ما كانت لديكم مشاكل نرجو منكم إرسال رسالة ولا تتحدثوا في الميكروفون رجاء. أيوة أندريا. Allora io vi ringrazio di questa opportunità. Come sapete noi siamo impegnati sia su un fronte politico, diplomatico che militare sulla vicenda libica. E dunque voi ci avrete un'opportunità di confronto diretto con la società civile, con le università con la comunità dei, delle, delle università e quindi ci aprite un'opportunità davvero molto importante. Ok, so uh, thank you very much for being here today. Eh, Gisela, no, è di Dawa. Can you? Ok. Uh, and uh, as you know, the parliament uh, are uh, engaged نحن 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 al dialogo, al confronto nelle sedi necessarie istituzionali, internazionali eh, quel, quel percorso di, di, di pace è fondamentale per, per la Libia and we all hope that in the next few hours we go back to the political level Consideriamo il rapporto che ci presentate questa mattina di Unimed un importante contributo perché ci segnala il ruolo fondamentale delle università bibliche in questa fase, in questa fase difficile, complicata, ma anche e soprattutto come prospettiva. ونعتقد أن التقرير الذي أنتم قمتم بسياته يعتبر تقريرا هاما خاصة خلال هذه الأوضاع الصعبة التي يعيشها المجتمع الليبي بما في دور الجامعات في هذا الإطار من أهمية e come le università الليبي hanno mantenuto in questa fase in questi anni una vitalità e un'autonomia fondamentale. Il settore educativo e della formazione hanno giocato un ruolo importante in un contesto anche di ricostruzione e, e questa considerazione ha un valore ancora più importante in Libia, eh, con particolare riguardo appunto al ruolo che hanno svolto le università.
the, the Libyan universities autonomy over the years تمكنت من تحقيق استقلاليتها على امتداد هذه السنوات لتلعب دورا هاما في إعادة الإعمار في داخل المجتمع الليبي وذلك لأهمية الدور الذي تلعب الجامعات. E se da una parte il bisogno espresso di un'apertura internazionale deve essere sostenuta dalle università europee e dalle organizzazioni internazionali. In questo senso esprimo un apprezzamento per il lavoro svolto da, in questi anni da Unimed. Uh, Dall'altra parte è altrettanto importante che, da, che le istituzioni comunitarie e il Parlamento europeo diano continuità e risorse al bisogno espresso dalla Libia e dalle sue università. Il ruolo delle università deve anche essere supportato through a direct support for science diplomacy action. أحتقد فهناك عمل دؤوم تقوم به منظومة يونيماد لدفع المجتمع الدولي والمجتمع الأكاديمي لتقديم الدعم للوصول إلى نتائج إيجابية وملموسة. أعتقد أننا نحتاج إلى تطوير شراكة كبيرة بين المؤسسات والمؤسسات tra le comuni tra la comunità scientifica tra le università europee e le università libiche e contribuire così anche a una costante crescita del sistema universitario libico sia in termini di offerta didattica che di ricerca scientifica favorire la mobilità degli studenti e dei ricercatori incrementare la collaborazione accademica tra università libiche ed europee Tutte queste azioni ed altro ancora devono essere considerate da tutti noi come una priorità non più rinviabile. We think that we have to make an additional effort. Alena, anna kuma bishoten idafi. A common and shared work on shared themes, and especially on mobility and cooperation. Kasumi al mesuliet wa alena al natajawaz al niqat al salbiya. وأن نعمل من أجل الحصول على منافع أفضل من خلال الجامعات الأوروبية والجامعات الليبية على حد سواء. Intensificare questa collaborazione tra giovani studenti e ricercatori libici. والتبادل بين الطلبة الليبيين والطلبة الأوروبيين. Possono fare pienamente parte della generazione mediterranea che dovrà in prossimo futuro essere capace di dare risposte alle crisi che purtroppo ancora oggi dunque davvero grazie di questa opportunità grazie di هذه الفرصة وأود أن أشكركم على هذه الفرصة المتاحة لي وعلى هذا التقرير. We need to contribute to the constant growth of the Libyan university system in terms of proper scientific research, mobility of students and researchers, increase. delle delle indicazioni che sono contenute nel rapporto e soprattutto, come sapete. Stiamo uscendo tutti da una lunga fase di lockdown. Uh, siamo tutti segnati voi doppiamente, uh, Covid e guerra contemporaneamente, noi dal Covid. E stiamo via via scoprendo quanto sia essenziale il ruolo e la, e la funzione delle università e delle strutture formative, soprattutto per le nuove generazioni. Dunque, io considero davvero il contributo di oggi un contributo importante, decisivo, per costruire un futuro per la Libia e anche nuove relazioni tra la Libia e l'Europa. Siamo tutti hit 
نحن متأثرون في أوروبا كثيرا بأزمة الكورونا والكوفيد 19 ونحن نعمل على توفير الموارد المالية الضرورية لمواجهة هذه الشائحة وعلى ما علينا أن نعمل كل ما في وسعنا لربط الصلة بين مختلف الأجيال المتوسطية ونقطع العلاقة فيما بيننا i collaboratori di Unimed, i ricercatori di Unimed per il lavoro prezioso che fanno e eh, spero davvero che questa sia una delle ultime occasioni in cui ci si incontra da remoto e, e ci si possa invece incontrare da, da, da vicino. Io ho tra l'altro la necessità di ritornare presto in Libia, di ritornare presto a Tripoli eh, e cogliere quella come un'occasione anche per incontrare le università i dipartimenti che contribuiscono al confronto anche di oggi. Quindi davvero grazie di questa, di questa opportunità. So I will finish by thanking uh, uh, for all of you for attending this conference. Uh, 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 Unimed, uh, 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 ونتمنى أن نلتقي في الأشهر القليلة القادمة لمواصلة هذا النقاش الثري شكرا شكرا أندريا جزيلا على هذه المداخلة ونتمنى أن أن نلتقي مستقبلا في ليبيا إن أمكن الأمر Molto presto, molto presto. Uh, and we will something with our universities in, in, in Libya, in the country, to, to talk with them, to talk with the students. الأساتذة الجامعيين والمجتمعات المحلية ولما لا في المستقبل أن نعمل مع بعض الزملاء في على مستوى البرلمان الأوروبي لكي نبرهن على أنه يمكن أن تكون لدينا قصص مختلفة حول ليبيا لكن هناك مجتمع أكاديمي وقوي جدا ونشط جدا ونريد أن نبين للبرلمان الأوروبي أنه من الممكن أن نعمل مع ليبيا بطريقة مختلفة وكذلك هناك أولويات كبيرة هناك المشاكل السياسية الكبرى وكيف يمكن أن نتحرك في مجالات مختلفة وفي نفس الوقت هناك جامعة وبيئة تحيط بها ويجب علينا أن نقوم بأقصى مجهوداتنا لكي نحصل أدائها شكرا جزيلا أرجو أن نلتقي مرة أخرى من قريبا في بروكسل أو في لوكسل شكرا جزيلا والآن قبل أن نعطي الكلمة لرئيسنا هناك تغيير صغير على مستوى البرنامج الآن سنعطي كلمة للسيد من طهر الذي سيتحدث عن باسم الوزير ومرة أخرى أدعو كل متحدث أن يستعمل القناة المناسبة بالنسبة للغة اللغة العربية أو الإنجليزية وكذلك أن يضع الصوت من المصدر في حالة صمت لتفادي الاستماع إلى صوت المترجم والمتحدث في نفس الوقت سيد طهر هل أنت موجود؟ لا أدري إذا ما كان معنا سيد طهر Ali, 
Okay, we can't hear you. It's okay now. Okay, it's okay. Please go ahead. Okay, جيد جدا. يمكن لك أن تنطلق. السلام عليكم. حياكم الله جميعا. في البداية أود أن أقدم بالشكر لمنظمين هذا اللقاء وهذا المحل الصوت. أنا خلي خلي I don't listen the interpreter. Can I ask the interpreter to give me a signal that everything is okay? Then. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Please. Uh, first of all, first of all good morning. Morning. I would like to thank uh, the organizers of this event. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell you about the uh, excuses of the minister who is not here. Thank you for the efforts done by UNIMED. Uh, and we insist on the importance to continue our collaboration. We thank you for your support in order to achieve our dreams. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, the Ambassador of the European Union, and to Libya, and Mr. Uh, and the, the chair of the chairman of the uh, uh, European Parliament and the chairman of the UNIMED. I would like to thank uh, the uh, director of the uh, uh, Bureau of International Cooperation. Yes, uh, uh, the uh, Mediterranean Basin has always had uh, historical relationships uh, of collaboration. And, uh, uh, this uh, thing, uh, of course, is very important. We, uh, it's very important to uh, achieve the objectives of the countries of the Mediterranean uh, together. Of course, what's uh, been done by the number of researchers is a great effort. And it's, it's a very important effort, and the Ministry of Higher Education will support their work in order to produce a set of uh, programs, uh, whether at the level of reforms or uh, the uh, updating of uh, data. And the Ministry will also uh, work with its different branches within Libyan universities to the voice has vanished from the source. I can't hear the speaker. Uh, I'm really sorry. Now, now it's back. Oh, okay. Now it's back. Sorry, now sorry. It's back. sorry. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. So, I would like to thank all the uh, attendees. And once again, uh, the minister um, uh, apologizes for not being here, but uh, we thank you very much for your interest for Libya, and hopefully we will get rid of Corona, and uh, hopefully we will be successful in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Shukran, and, uh, 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 now I, I don't know the reason why I listened also the Arabic. Now it's okay. Uh, the, oh, I listen also the Arabic translation. Probably you have uh, the, for the interpreters you have to follow the instruction not to change. Now, not to change now it's okay. 
Okay. It's okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Thayer. Shukran for jazeelan uh, uh, ala uh, hadha al-tadakhkhal. Wa maradhan akhra shukran li ma'ali al-wazir wa nashkur al-zumala min al-wizara al-lazina ya'amaduna ma'ala Sayyid Sultan Salem wa Sayyid Ali Bakir wa hum yad'amuna al-tariqatim muhimma wa kama khultam The work that we are doing at the Libyan University, from the genuine interest of the Libyan University, and this is what the starting point of the curiosity of the work started to show it to the world. الذي <تصفيق> الآن أعطي الكلمة إلى رئيسنا الأستاذ فرانسيسكو مارتيبون شكراً شكراً جزيلاً أريد أن أشكر أولاً قبل كل شيء الوزارة ووزير العالم العالي وطبعاً Tahir, uh, whom we have just uh, listened to, but also all the other people and institutions who are cooperating. I want to thank the ambassador of the EU to Libya, uh, Mr. Alan Bugeya, we heard. And Dr. Andrea Gozzolino, the chairman of the European Parliament delegation for relations with the Maghreb countries. Uh, but let me thank also the European institutions uh, and all the people who cooperated and made this uh, event uh, possible. Uh, last but not least, all the people and the researchers of UNIMED uh, who uh, work on, on these projects daily and make them possible. As Marcello said, uh, the idea of a conference on Libya and in Libya has been there for some time now, but we've had to postpone it for different reasons. Uh, and when it looked as if uh, we were going to be able to hold it, Uh, Covid arrived and every, everything had to be postponed again. Uh, so uh, we do hope to be able to hold such a conference in Libya uh, in the future. Let's hope in the near future, not far away. Uh, as uh, Dr. Kotsolino said, we really hope this is the last time or one of the last times we are compelled to meet uh, using these means instead of meeting personally, uh, which makes things much easier and cooperation and communication between people uh, much more pleasant and uh, productive. Uh, Universities, as we know, uh, well, Marcello mentioned uh, an important thing, that uh, Libyan universities, were, there were no Libyan universities in UNIMED in very few years. Uh, they have come to be the first country after Italy, and now, if I'm not wrong, we have 11 Libyan universities in UNIMED, which is uh, uh, a, good, uh, a good number. And this is very important because we thank our colleagues from Libyan University, from Libyan University for this uh, 
will to cooperate uh, with UNIMED and uh, UNIMED will try to will do its best to try to help and contribute somehow uh, uh, to the legal situation, transferring the experience developed over its 30 years of existence of dialogue and cooperation between universities between the two shores of the Mediterranean. Uh, one of the objectives of UNIMED is, uh, of course, to sustain university autonomy and the academic freedom, freedom of research, freedom in the didactics, in teaching, as fundamental pillars to contribute to the development of open societies and uh, to help the world move forward. In this sense, we hope that the work that has been done so far uh, can be carried on and with the uh, I hope with a growing contribution uh, of Libyan universities. Uh, universities, as we know, are the world of training, teaching, so we are supposed to train future generations, but also to carry on the training of uh, adult generations uh, who are uh, doing things now, and to develop uh, new ideas, innovative proposals to tackle the new problems that arise in our world. Uh, this coronavirus crisis, which we are uh, facing right now, is uh, an example of a situation in which uh, universities can and must do a lot. And international cooperation is absolutely essential uh, to solve uh, the problems of the world. Libya is a strategic point. Uh, in this sense, for different reasons, for its relationships with other countries in Africa, sub-Saharan countries, for instance, but also because it is uh, because of the, the crisis situation we have in Libya, it is strategic because it gives us the possibility of developing good practices and strategies to tackle the problems of higher education in complex uh, scenarios like the Libyan scenarios. Different ways of cooperation were mentioned. I think between universities, of course, research is essential. We have to do a lot uh, to propose innovative solutions. We are the ones, universities, uh, the, different, the societies in the countries uh, at a very, very uh, detailed level, let's put it like that, because we can reach through our students, through our staff, and through the families of our students, we can reach all of our societies, and therefore we can also, and we must also help and contribute to the to improving these societies and to propose uh, new ideas, new solutions. Uh, politics and politicians were mentioned. Politics and politicians happened not to be quite connected with the reality of countries sometimes. And universities have the possibility of helping politics and politicians to propose 
by proposing uh, detailed analysis of the different situations and new uh, ideas. And therefore, I think cooperation between universities is essential and an association like UNIMED, working with different realities of our world, not because we have, we have in our association universities from very different contexts. Is an association that can do a lot to help this world, and I do hope that in the Libyan case, we can develop this cooperation with Libyan universities and uh, come with new uh, solutions. Uh, thank you very much again to everybody, to the UNIMED staff, and all the institutions who are participating in this important uh, event. Uh, and thank you to the UNIMED staff who works on our Libya Restart uh, publication, which is available now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Francisco, for your intervention. And uh, obviously, your support and your political uh, commitment is very important for all, all of us, all the members in itself, for the board, but in particular for, for, for us as we uh, uh, we are in a small delay, but we know all of us that working in the online dimension, some minutes to set everything to fix the issues. We hope that we will be able to manage this. I will explain you now how we go now in the context of our introduction about the activities on the government. حول طبعا الانشطه التنمويه على مستوى الحكمه الحكمه وكيف يمكن لنا اصلاح الحكمه and then I will give uh, the floor to Mr. Mohamed al that Muhammad al al uh, Libyan system and then we will have a brief methodology of the Libyan then we will have a free session الحصة خاصة للتوصيات حول التأمين النوعية وكذلك الحوكمة وكذلك الجامعات الليبية في المجتمع ككل ثم ستكون هناك حصة مع الخبراء الخارجيون والممثلين للمؤسسات الوطنية وسيكون لدينا طبعا حوار حول التوصيات والأولويات خلال الحصة المخصصة للتوصيات ستكون لدينا بعض الدقائق التي سنقوم خلالها بنقاش وفي الحصة سنخصص بعض الوقت نقاش نقاش حول الموضوع ستكون لدينا أسئلة وإجابات كذلك أدعوكم كذلك لما كانت لديكم أسئلة أو تعليقات استعملوا طبعا الرسائل الإلكترونية و وسنحاول طبعا أن نتناقش في هذه المواضيع مع بعض كما قلت من قبل نحن كيونيماد نعمل كثيرا على موضوع الحوكمة وكيف يمكننا الدعم لدينا الكثير من الأولويات في برنامجنا كما تعلمون لكن من المشاكل الكبرى هي الحوكمة من أكبر المشاكل على مستوى الأولويات لدينا الحكمة الحوكمة طبعا إدارة الويب وبناء في بعض الأحيان في بعض الأخطاء ويجب علينا أن ننتظر حدوث بعض الأخطاء لهذا السبب أدعو ضيفا آخر مهم السفير السفير السفيرة الفرنسية لليبيا في ليبيا التي ستعطينا 
Greetings to all of us. As you know, we invite them to discuss with all you, uh, you uh, uh, embassy to, to Libya to invite them to play an important role. Please, the Wazara al Safar al Jadida in Libya will be playing a important role. Is the Lady Safira Mawjuda? Do you hear us? Merci beaucoup, Marcel. Vous pouvez m'entendre? Can you hear me? Altasmaunani. Unfortunately, can are you? Est-ce que vous pouvez m'entendre? Bonjour. Il faudrait, uh, Madame, Madame, me? Madame l'ambassadrice, il faudrait vous mettre sur le canal anglais. Il faudrait en bas, vous avez un, au niveau oui, de la présentation. Oui, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We listen both. Madame? Hello. Is, that, is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Please try uh, again. Let me uh, try. Let me try again. I just wanted um, okay. very. Yes? Yes, please, please go ahead. Uh, Thank you very much for giving me um, this opportunity to say just a few words. It's, uh, it's very important for, um, uh, for France to, to, say, to say again uh, to all the team of, uh, of UNIMED how much uh, we appreciate the work um, uh, that you do, uh, uh, that the universities, um, this, this project restart, uh, 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 which has associated the, the Libyan universities, uh, it's totally relevant. It gives me the opportunity to see on the video the, the faces and video the names of uh, many uh, Libyan colleagues that, that I have met. So it's, um, it's very emotional and positive. I want also, I just want, of course, to acknowledge uh, the the presence of the European Parliament through the delegate of to, for relations with the Maghreb countries. And um, I just want to associate myself totally with the, with the words by um, Francisco Matebon on this uh, on the role of UNIMED and on the Francisco UNIMED we we often say that youth is the is of course the future of Libya. But those also who need our support today are the academics, the professors, the managers of the universities, the students of the universities. They offer in Libya a fantastic space of, um, of debate and uh, relative, relative harmony. And so um, we, we really see in, in the project of UNIMED the opportunity for UNIMED for us a lot of uh, a lot of entities to come together. هناك الكثير من الكيانات التي يمكن أن تتصل ببعضها البعض من خلال هذا البرنامج والمشروع. There خلال مداخلتي. Francisco Matebon mentioned for independent academic research. 
in any country, including في, Libya. في أي بلد بما في ذلك ليبيا. I know that um, it doesn't always appear as a, a very important goal. It doesn't always appear as a very important goal. It doesn't always appear as a very important goal. It doesn't always appear as a very important goal. It doesn't always I want to assure you that there is a, there is a mobilization on our side through an institute which is covering Libya and from Tunisia, which is the research institute on the contemporary Maghreb. وهو طبعا مركز مختص بالبلاد المغرب العربي الحديثة. IRMC, which is based in Tunisia, and anything we can do to help you. يمكن لنا مساعدتكم في أي مجال تحتاجون. يمكن لنا أن ننظم لقاءات اجتماعات ويسعدنا كثيرا القيام بهذا المجهود لفائدتكم. ثم هناك العنصر الآخر الذي تحدثتم حوله خلال المقدمة وهو مشروع الاتحاد الأوروبي لتطوير طبعا مشروع لكل ما هو ريادة أعمال With a number of universities and chambers of commerce in Libya, and also the government of Libya. Thanks to EU funding, we're trying to transform those certifications into bachelor's degrees. We're trying to And that, that we think uh, allows us to address the very immediate need to. نوفر كل ما هو حاجيات فورية بالنسبة للجامعات الليبية لكي ندمج ونسهل الشباب في سوق الشغل. So the, the strengths of UNIMED is that it, uh, it addresses uh, uh, the UNIMED that it addresses all this range of uh, issues. Uh, and, um, and, uh, And I'm really looking forward to hear the, the debates between uh, your, uh, your team of experts and, uh, and the delegates from different universities. Merci beaucoup. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Madame Labassatrice. Uh, as you know, we have a uh, very good connection with French uh, universities. We have uh, five big French universities in our network, and we are obviously working jointly with them. Uh, and we have new members who continue to do our best for uh, the universities. It's a pleasure that you are not only with us, but with us, that you are following our initiative, and we will sure to support the support of French institutions. This uh, work, and I hope that soon we will uh, discuss with our uh, also French partners in France. Uh, he added to, to do something specific for uh, Okay, as I said, we now go more in detail about the details of the reports. I will. Uh, reduce my intervention because we have uh, some delay. Uh, as I said, the, the, the importance of governance, uh, uh, how to reform governance in the education system in the southern European countries. Uh, we are working through new projects in several countries on this issue because uh, the, the, the lack of institutional autonomy and the lack of academic freedom in several southern European countries. 
تختلف على مستوى امكانيات البحث واعتقد ان هذه النقطه هي نقطه يجب علينا اخذها بعين الاعتبار لكي نقلص من الفرق بين جامعاتنا ونحن نعمل على مستوى مشروع كبير مع الجامعات التونسيه نقوم بتجريب تجارب uh, مماثلة في, في الجزائر لدينا كذلك مشروع مماثل في العراق والهدف هو أن نفتح نفتح طبعا الأبواب البحث للمنظومة العالم في ليبيا وكذلك أن في المبادرات الإقليمية كيف يمكن للبلدان العربية على المستوى المتوسط أن من خلال مبادرات إقليمية وكيف يمكن إصلاح الحوكمة وكذلك كيف يمكن لنا دعم ومساعدة الجامعات الليبية لكي تكون مستقلة في عملها طبعاً هذا المسار الإسلامي يجب علينا القيام به على المستوى الدولي ويجب علينا كذلك أن نقول على الحوكمة السياسية وطبعاً يونيماد وجميعاً يجب أن نحن نحاول to the management system of universities to reform the system in itself with the bottom-up And I think that Libyan colleagues will be with us to continue this reflection on how to reform their education system in, in, in Libya. Uh, which has a very particular um, point that we uh, underlined in, in, in our region. We found that Libyan universities were active also in a very particular situation by the war. They were considered as an independent player. They were considered like uh, out of the, the political uh, fight in some way. This was very, very interesting for us. It was the starting reason for our analysis. Uh, I stop here to save some time and I give the floor now to Dr. Mohamed Hedatou, the director of the National Center for Quality Assurance and Accreditation uh, of Educational and Training Institutes. Uh, you have Mr. Hedatou, thanks for to be with us. And I'll move to Libyan colleagues. Thanks for being with us. And we have, please, no more than 10 minutes to give us a brief overview of the future of the process of Libyan education. Mr. Latouk is there. Mr. Latouk. هل أنت تسمعني؟ Can I ask my colleague to say if Mr. Latouk is there? هل يمكنك Please, Mr. Latouk, can you uh, turn on your microphone, please? نرجوك يا أستاذ معتوق أن تفتحوا اللاقط الصوتي الميكروفون. Your microphone is mute, Mr. Ratug. Uh, now, yes. Could you start again, please? Good morning. I would like to... The director of the quality department.
I would like to thank uh, Minimed officials, uh, the EU uh, ambassador for their support to this uh, partnership, this scientific partnership between the north and the south of the Mediterranean. I am extremely happy to meet um, these uh, academic uh, experts uh, who are uh, you know, all over the world and in we are a national entity dedicated uh, to uh, Guaranteeing uh, quality assurance and uh, validate uh, Libyan uh, higher, university, higher education uh, institute. We, as a quality assurance uh, entity, we are working closely with our partners to improve the quality of higher uh, education. And uh, we work through uh, this uh, partnership uh, in order to develop uh, ourselves and uh, our processes. The, the sound is uh, regularly interrupted. We can't hear the gentleman properly. So we are asking European academic institutions to support our center because we are facing several concerns due to security and political instability that is impacting our activities. We would like to work in order to further develop the quality of our higher educational system. We look forward to uh, having more support from our partners, uh, um, especially in the field of the development of our human resources. So that uh, we can uh, assist uh, our institutions in order to enable them to uh, review quality assurance criteria. And, uh, so we uh, would like to receive uh, full uh, support uh, um, uh, in uh, academic and uh, scientific fields and uh, to receive the uh, appropriate presentation and uh, mentorship so that uh, we can upgrade our center and our institutions. Ultimately, and I would not like to dwell on this uh, issue, there will be further opportunities uh, to uh, cooperate and to talk together. We look forward to uh, supporting this partnership so that we can benefit mutually. We are aware that our partners in the uh, northern shore of the Mediterranean have a very long experience and their institutions are deeply rooted in the field of uh, assurance. So this is why we would like to ask you to further support our institutions uh, in the field of quality assurance. And as I said, I hope that this meeting will help us achieve our goals and establish this partnership so that it becomes sustainable and resilient for the sake and the benefit of the Mediterranean higher education institutions. We are grateful for you, uh, to you for this uh, support. And, um, to uh, uh, EU 
uh, universities and to uh, UNIMED, and we I'm ready to answer any uh, clarification uh, requests and any question related to this cooperation and partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dr. And for sure, we will uh, continue the, the cooperation with ومع الجامعات الليبية لكي نوفر طبعا خدماتنا وخبراتنا 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 المتعددون من الجامعات المختلفة ونريد كذلك أن نعرف أكثر تفاصيل حول فريقكم not only your needs, but about the situation in Libya is the only way to, because we have nothing to offer if we don't talk directly. We don't have anything to offer if we don't talk directly. We don't have anything to offer if we don't talk Joint forces for a common initiative on also uh, reform, governance, and quality assurance uh, in uh, southern Mediterranean. Uh, uh, I think that the last ministerial meeting of Europe and Mediterranean countries discussing about education was in 2007 and it was in Cairo. And from 2007 to 2020, there is uh, a new world, a new world, totally a new world, and I think this is, I think that this initiative in some way pushed international institutions, your government, all the governments, to launch a new initiative to create a euro mediterranean space for uh, our relationship. Okay, I give now, and thanks again to Dr. Latouk, I give now the floor to one of the team of Libya Restart in Unima, Eugenio Badania. Eugenio will explain you the key findings and the methodology of Libya Restart. After Eugenio, the other university colleagues will go more in detail about each recommendation that we selected for the webinar today and we will go more in detail. Uh, again, before to give the floor to Eugenio, I remind you, please, that so if you want to interview for me, to participate for some questions, in any case, please select your language and follow your language in the interpretation button and mute the original audio to be able to listen only the language that you selected. Because I saw that there is some messages in the chat related to this problem time by time. I know that it's difficult. I can rest you to be patient. That is the only way to manage conference at the moment. And I think that it's important to be not only patient, but also successful. بالصبر لتجاوز هذه المشاكل التقنية. مرحبا بكم. Dr. Scalisi, the university has said now I'm going to make a short presentation introduction to the Libya Restart project. This is a report, as you can say, has a structure that I'm going to show you and I'm going to give you also more information about the methodology and the other results used in the study used by the Unimed team in the construction of the development of this report. I'm going to give you also more information about the other results and the probably also about the other steps that we are going to follow in this master. الخطوات so المستقبلية وكما ترون على مستوى التخطيط فهناك ثلاث أجزاء نركز الأول 
وهو لمحة منظومة التعليم العالي الجبية في بعض المعطيات والبيانات والأرقام الجزء الثاني وهو الأهم هو التركيز على موضوع خصوصي حدث عن الحوكمة والاستقلالية وضمان الجودة داخل منظومة التعليم العالي الجبية الجامعات الليبية بين البعض الوطني والدولي ثم التعاون خلال الشريعة المولى من المفوضيات الأوروبية والجامعات الليبية المجتمع بشكل عام مستوى الحقوق والصناعة والتعاون مع المجتمع المدني ثم الحاجيات والمعوقات داخل منظومة التعليم العادي من خلال تحليل السوات ما ثم هناك توصيات وهناك أيضا نتائج أخرى بالاعتماد على تحليل سوات لمنظومة التعليم العالي الليبية ثم نتطرق بعد ذلك إلى الجانب الأخير من خلال مناقشة جدول الأعمال اليوم والنقطة الرئيسية في جدول الأعمال اليوم هي التوصيات هناك نتائج أخرى والتي أننا يوني مادة لم تنشر هذا التقرير فقط بل أيضا نشرت أهم النتائج للتحليل ثم هناك قسم خاص ببيانات للمؤسسات الجامعية والجامعات الليبية المشاركة في هذا العمل بعد ذلك نعطيكم بعض المعلومات حول المناهجية التي قمنا باتباعها في هذا المشروع فهناك ثلاثة خطوات هناك المنهج الكمي والنوعي ثم التصديق وهذا مرتبط أو يعتمد على الطرق الكمية والنوعية من خلال مشاركة الشركاء الليبيين وفي الجانب الآخر هناك أي الجانب النوعي فهناك نتائج الكمية التي تم تحليلها بكل عناية وقمنا بتحليل نوعي وهنا لم نخذ بعين الاعتبار جميع المشاريع بل المشاريع التي تمول قبل الاتحاد الاوروبي هناك المرحلة النوعية وفي هذه المرحلة النوعية هناك تحليل بيانات نوعية وما مكننا ومكن المشاركين الشركاء من إدراج بعض البيانات والقيام بتحليل معمق لها وبعد هذا التحليل الأولي قامت يونيماد في سلسلة ألكترونيكي مختلف المشاكل والمعوقات وتطرقنا إلى بعض المشاكل التي تواجهها الجامعات الليبية وهي مسألة هامة وجب تحديدها 
uh, in order to understand a better uh, understand the, the, the data that we had before. After that, the third phase was the validation. So, once the first version of the data has been completed, we sent that uh, to فدرجنا المقترحات والملاحظات التي قدمها الشركاء داخل هذا التقرير وبفضل هذه العملية المناجية نحن على مستوى يونيماد تمكننا من فهم أوضاع منظومة التعليم العالي الليبية وفهمنا أيضا بفضل هذه المساهمة المباشرة من الشركاء وهي المواضيع الهامة بالنسبة لنا بعد ذلك هناك جزء هام آخر في هذا التقرير All the work done by the following, by following the methodological process that we have before, and all the methodological process that we have before, we had the improvement in all the we made an evaluation of this system and we developed a SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is a strategic planning tool that we use to identify different chains. والتي تعني نقاط القوى نقاط الضعف والفرص السانحه والمخاطر وبفضل ذلك قمنا بتحليل العناصر الداخليه والخارجيه وادمجناها معا لنفهم ما هي ما هو نوع التوصيات التي نريد uh, so, uh, this is what analysis you can say is present in the visual form with four boxes and uh, square. And uh, the analysis has been used as the knowledge base uh, to develop the set of recommendations. So, um, the recommendations at the end of the last part of the last part of the recommendations that of course, is something um, it, 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 the recommendation should not be intended as, as we say, written in the stone, but are more, are, we can, uh, we can uh, think that food for thought, so guidelines, uh, 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 elements, uh, 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 things about the development of the development اعتمادها كخطة توجيهية لتطوير والتوسيع ومراجعة منظومة التعليم العالي الليبية وضرورة مراجعتها قبل إرسال هذه التوصيات إلى شركائنا الليبية فتحدثنا أو تناولنا مسألة الحوكمة والاستقلالية وضمان الجودة والتعاون الدولي وطبع وضعية الجامعات في المجتمع بشكل عام وبعد التوصيات كما قال الأستاذ سكاليتي فجميع أعضاء الفريق سيفسرون لكم هذه التوصيات فصلا فصلا وهذه المقاربة المناجية التي اتبعناها Record. Um, of course, if you have some uh, question about the method approach, you can ask questions. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, if there is any question about the methodological approach, or directly مباشرة. The next sessions and contents as the Okay, there is not any question at the moment on the management. Go ahead, giving the floor to the
Thank you very much. So now I'm giving the floor to my colleague Silvia Marchionne uh, that will uh, start the section on the governance, uh, university governance and uh, quality assurance. So, Thank you very much, Eugenio. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to present uh, this morning some findings and uh, more important recommendations on, on governance and quality assurance on this uh, sector. Uh, this session uh, with me uh, will be also to Libyan University. We will have Professor Ahmed Sawalem from the University and Professor Abed so after my presentation, we will have the opportunity to share your views and perspectives. Why? So I will start. So why university governance and autonomy? Worldwide, university governance has been one of the key elements that has been the resident focus in our education reform. And this is also applied to Libya. This concept describes how university and higher education institutions بيانات الجامعة الليبية هو أن الأهداف غير موضحة واضحة مستوى الوطني ونقترح بالتالي في تقريرنا إحدى التوصيات للعمل من أجل for higher education, on which universities can rely to define their own national strategic plans. In this regard, the role of the university president and the definition of a national strategic strategy by which institutional plans could be inspired. Therefore, we as UNIMED work together with our international partners and international universities and the ministry. We are all together with the Life Support, uh, the Libyan Ministry of Education and University, to define a shared national strategic vision for the higher education system in Libya through our enforced role of the University President Council and thanks to the development of an effective and tailored university governance system through the benchmarking and benchmarking system. This means that universities from the European Union, for example, countries and other countries in the southern Mediterranean region should work in a mutual approach to transfer a shared practices on university governance, especially in order to know how to improve university performance this is also what our director of university was mentioning to work on an original initiative on governance. We saw also in our analysis the necessity to increase university academic autonomy as a priority to define a diversified teaching and learning pedagogical methodologies and to have the possibility to introduce new courses and goals. In our report, we saw that the need of autonomy in academic science is partial and we believe that and we will suggest that, that by organizing training activities for academic staff where they learn how about the new teaching practices, assessment methodologies, management of the academic offered digital tools, this could be a tool to enhance their uh, academic autonomy. Uh, also, European University and international organizations, of course, they can give a support to this, and that's why we, uh, we we invite all the our international stakeholders to work together to, to transfer uh, these tools to, to the University of Libya and to enhance their quality in the university. On financial autonomy, uh, as you know, uh, University of Libya have a very limited access to 
قدرات اللي بيها للنفاذ المحدود للموارد المالية بعد الميزانية أو المؤسنات المخصصة عوضا عن ذلك أنشدة مواردة بديلة في تحسين الموارد المالية والتمكينها من تحسين خدماتها ومن أي تحسين الخدمات التعليمية وهذا نحن نقترح في هذا الصدد تحسين الاستخدام المالية في الجامعات الليبية وهو مسار طويل ومعقد ويمكن أن نقترح في تحريرنا أن تكون هناك اجتماعات دائمة بين الجامعات الليبية والموظفين وزارة التعليم ومن أجل إيجاد الحلول الملائمة والضرورية لتحسين أداء I talk for now for ACA about autonomy, institutional autonomy and governance, but of course one of the other main dimensions of this concept of university governance is quality. And with also a dedicated chapter on this concept. As we were hearing before from Dr. El Atur, we have in the recent Libya a huge work to improve the quality standards in performance and teaching learning activities. That's why also we recommend to increase the training activities of university staff members at Libya University to try to guarantee a quality level standard in their performance in teaching and learning. How we can, we have defined this is possible. We imagine that we can define the university in Libya to define a three-step awareness scheme. What does it mean? They should first raise awareness on the topics and the importance of higher education. Second, to define a training scheme for both academics and university staff. Third, to provide awards for participants as an incentive for professional growth. And of course, related to this concept of quality assurance of teaching and learning activities, it's very crucial the role of quality and we discovered that in all Libya universities there are the risks of office, but they should be reinforced and strengthened their role. They should be able to define and to spread a widely shared quality culture in the higher education system. This is very crucial to upscale and to upgrade the existing quality quality evaluation offices in a way that they could become a reference point to disseminate and to share quality assurance practices to define and share quality indicators, not only related to administrative financial issues, but also to teaching and learning process. This office should support the university leaders, so managers, administrators and teachers in improving the quality standards of the institution. Of course, this office cannot work alone. This should be in within this framework the role and of the National Center of for Quality Assurance and Accreditation uh, that should support, of course, the university quality assurance process and the should support and be uh, the, the liaison with the great uh, playing the role to the great between the universities and the, 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 the national and the evaluation of so it should widen the scope of action of the National Center for Quality Assurance and Accreditation, not only granting the compliance of universities in terms of administrative, financial and logistical aspects, but also checking the compliance with the high IEX quality standards, both in terms of teaching methodology and content of the program offerings. Um, all these recommendations will be found in the in, uh, in the report, and I will be very glad to, uh, to share, to, to hear the voice and to hear also the point of view of our colleague from Libyan universities, as I mentioned, Misurata University de la Stratia. I'll try to be very brief and concise in order to allow also the opportunity uh, to our participants if they have uh, some questions to intervene. Um, so I kindly ask uh, my uh, 
محمد سوالم في البداية أسمحوا لي أن أرحب السادة المشاركين معنا في هذا اللقاء هذا من الاتحاد الأوروبي والبرلمان الأوروبي وكذلك السادة المشاركين في البداية وبعد الاطلاع على التقرير من اليونيميت فإننا نتقدم بالشكر للسادة يونيميت والفريق الذي قام بإعداد هذا التقرير الشامل ونؤكد احترامنا لهذا العمل وهذا ما عهدناه دائما Sorry Professor, I wanted to interrupt you but we have the problem of before I think that the interpreter should change the channel because otherwise we hear both voices from Professor Sawalem and then in the Arabic we cannot hear the translation Try to دكتور عبيد طفي الواحد المايك عندك Yes, we hear you, but probably what we can do is a consecutive uh, okay. translation, even okay. if we can, uh, we will be more longer, but probably it will be better for, for us to understand. Uh, thank you, Professor Sawalem. Please, uh, when you, to stop a little bit, uh, so that we can allow the consecutive the translation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, هذا ما عهدناه دائما من فريق اليونيمد الذي تعاوننا معه تعاوننا معه في عدة مشاريع التعاون الدولي بين الجامعات الليبية والاتحاد الأوروبي regarding the collaboration وأذكر بالتحديد الفريق المصري Marcello and also Marco Nato, Silvia, Martina, all the members of the team have been thanked for this huge effort made in order to prepare this conference. As my colleague has already said, one of the main elements in the success of the university. وحوكمة الجامعات وكيفية تحديد أهدافها وتنفيذها وإدارة مؤسساتها ومراقبة إنجازاتها هذا يتطلب حقيقة إعطاء أكثر استقلالية للجامعات وأود في هذه المناسبة أن أضع بين أيديكم بعض الملاحظات التي نرى أنها ستعطي إضافة لهذا التقرير وبالإمكان إضافتها إلى التوصيات فيما يخص الحوكمة 
النقطة الأولى التي أشرنا إليها وأن إنجاح نظام الحوكمة في التعليم العالي يجب أن تكون هناك استقلالية للجامعات must rely on a main element that is the uh, uh, autonomy of the uh, universities and setting up the uh, future programs and curricula of the, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the higher education institutions. For example, we need to give the right to create a new, new specialties and develop these specialties in parallel or in conformity with the labor market in order to help the national economy and create job opportunities to the graduates of these universities because these generations need to participate in the future of the country. This requires uh, uh, reviewing some laws, uh, laws that are used uh, currently uh, in uh, uh, And we should avoid also the routine procedures. The second element I would like you to add to the recommendations to give an importance to the electronic governance within our universities and to set the principles of e-learning within these universities and use this system, especially with the actual situation أو في ظل الظروف التي تمر بالعالم. in 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 the situations throughout the whole world is facing like COVID-19, which the whole world is facing today. النقطة الثالثة. the third point I would like to talk about. التي لتحقيق الحوكمة بالجامعات. in order to achieve governance within our universities and in order to ensure their. الأمر يتطلب أن تكون للجامعات موارد اقتصادية مستقلة. need to have their own economic means independently. وهذا يتأتى بالاستفادة. and this can be achieved. من مراكز البحوث from the research centers وتقديم الاستشارات we can also get consultation والشراكات مع القطاعات الصناعية والخدمية parties and we also can develop partnerships وذلك عبر خلق آلية throughout the creation of mechanism أو تشريع or legal framework لتوزيع عائد الموارد المالية في الجامعات. تبيوت the financial means in a fair manner. الأمر الذي سيعود بالفائدة على الجامعة ومتسبيها. This will be beneficial for the university and its stakeholders. وحاليا نحن في جامعة مصراتة نحاول أن نقدم مقترح للوزارة عن كيفية جباية الرسوم والموارد المالية للجامعة. Taxes can be recovered and how we can bail out the universities and give them more financial means. هناك ملاحظة أخيرة أود أن أذكرها. One last observation I would like to mention. أن التقرير ورد في التقرير عملية الهيكلة هيكلة الجامعات. هناك أن هناك فرق بين الجامعات الليبية في الهيكلية. أود الإشارة إلى أن هناك لجنة في وزارة التعليم تعمل منذ سنة تقريبا that started working since preparation of unified structuring of the Libyan report would mention this information 
هذا ما لدينا من ملاحظات واتمنى التوفيق ولكل الجامعات الليبيه والاوروبيه وشكرا لاعطائي هذه الفرصه واشكر بالذات السيده سيلفيا وسيد ماركو ناتو على ذلك ماركو دوناتو and Mr. Marco Donato. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you to you, Professor Sawalem, for, uh, for, for sharing your views and your thoughts okay, on, the, on the report, and especially on this recommendation of governance. As we, as we said also at the beginning of our, our webinar, this is a starting point. So we, we really want that this, uh, this conference could be an opportunity for all of us to, uh, to collect your views and point of view on our perspective in order to, uh, to work together in the future. حول هذه المسائل من أجل الناس تعمى هذا البرنامج مستقبلا شكرا جزيلا الآن سأعطي الكلمة إلى الدكتور Please, the floor is yours. I think that uh, if you will speak English to stay also in the English channel to avoid the translation issues. Thank you, Dr. Abed. Please unmute your mic. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Abed, the micro is mute. So we cannot hear you. You should unmute your mic. Hello, good morning. Uh, do you hear me now? هل تستمعون إلي؟ هل تستمعون إلي؟ Do you hear me now? Yes. هل تستمعون إلي الآن؟ نعم. شكرا. تفضل. Okay. Uh, on behalf of the University of Ajdabia, I'd like to thank you all and I want to thank Unimed for um, taking the time and the effort uh, and all the uh, available resources and possible resources uh, in behalf of the development of the universities uh, in Libya. Um, of course, we, we build humans, we build uh, 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 people's education. And therefore, um, the first point I think to, to start with is to build a strong collaboration with the, with the university uh, so that we can uh, 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 enhance the performance of our universities in Libya. We will, um, of course, enhance the performance of our universities in each Libyan university. So, um, the first point here is uh, we would like to um, uh, get an autonomy for our universities in Libya and collaboration with the universities and therefore the performance of the management uh, in universities in Libya. Uh, um, so as my colleagues have uh, uh, said, and obviously we, we, uh, we agree on this point, that, that collaboration with the universities and the EU uh, will give us a more opportunity, a better opportunity to uh, enhance our research skills, uh, I mean the research skills of the academics in our Libyan uh, universities. Uh, we have the administrative issue, we have the technical performance. Uh, so all of these uh, uh, issues will uh, of course be uh, improved throughout uh, a strong and real collaboration with the universities uh, and the EU. بين الجامعات الليبية والاتحاد الأوروبي. أما على مستوى الحوكمة، هي النقطة هناك نقطة أهمة أخرى هو أننا كنا نعمل دائما، كنا نعمل دائما وسنعمل دائما بعيدا عن التجاذبات السياسية، لن نكون جزءا في أي خلاف سياسي، فكل الجامعات الليبية تشتغل political uh, disagreement uh, is relevant so this is a very important point to, uh, to uh, uh, of course uh, we have a um, 
the social cultural context in Libya. الإطار الاجتماعي الوطني في ليبيا وهو يختلف عن الإطار الأوروبي وهنا لنا دور هام علينا أن نلعبه ليس على مستوى جامعتنا فقط بل على مستوى أي مؤسسة حكومية في ليبيا لدينا علاقات شخصية بين الأفراد والأشخاص التي تؤثر في الخيارات وفي انتقاء الأطراف الفاعلة والوظفين وهو موجود في كل جامعة ليبية ونقترح أن نشتغل بشكل وثيق جميع الجامعات الليبية بشكل وثيق ويمكن مناقشته في اجتماع حضوري and discuss the proposal and we can, I think we can, uh, all of us, we can come up with a shared vision, uh, which can help uh, the President's Council here in Libya to uh, develop a shared vision for our هذا كل ما لدي أن أقوله في الحاضر. لدينا كل جامعة وهي لا تتناول الموضوع الحالي في ليبيا وهي مسألة جدية من سوء الحظ. فأن الموظفين لا يقومون بالاعتبار أهداف ومهمة الجامعة عند التدريس في الفصول في اختيار الدروس والمناهج يكونوا دائما بشكل اعتباطي وهي ما نعتبره علاقة كبيرة بالنسبة للإطار التدريسي علينا أن نأخذ ذلك مخرجة خلال الحصول الإستقلالية أعتقد أن الجامعات الاتحاد الأوروبي أن تأخذ بعنا تبارك كل هذه المسائل المسائل عند تقديم المساعدة لنا هذا ما لدينا أن نقوله في وقت حاضر وشكرا على أدعاءتي وهو ما تقوى عليه بالتعاون الدولي بين الجامعات الليبية وجامعات الاتحاد الأوروبي على غرار Thank you so much, Dr. Adet. It's Unimalet. Thank you for your intervention. I guess there are some comments, and we have only five minutes of time to pass the second section. I will ask my colleague, Eugenio, to read the comments and so to allow in very short time five minutes to answer. Eugenio, the first time I come to the first time from Hamad, he thinks that Dr. Rahla took that as a member of the agency of IMQA and you can refer to the cooperation in this institution in UNIMED for the best of the Arab Union. This is of course comments. The question has come from the Palestine Al-Sawinta from Palestine. The question is, have you touched back the origin and the third comment comes from the Secretary General General Alamina. It's in French, I can translate the the <laughs> <laughs> 
Steph, okay, thank you so much. Yes, I, I, I will try to answer. Then, of course, if our colleagues from Libya would like to add something or one of my colleagues uh, from Unimed, yes, definitely in defining this, uh, this data, this analysis, we have taken into account, I'm referring to our colleague from Palestine, uh, we have taken into account uh, the political, and historical, and geographical, and social uh, context of Libya. In, in their country. And well, uh, when we, uh, we submitted not only the surveys to collect quantitative well, data, well, but well, especially well, when we well, perform well, all well, these well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, so we well, try well, to understand the well, overall well, context well, in the well, and, um, well, and you, well, you will find uh, indeed well, uh, a first section, a first chapter, uh, when we uh, give a brief well, overview well, of the Libyan well, education well, system, well, uh, taking well, the well, well, the framework and the context well, where well, they are well, working. Well, um, well, so, uh, thank you so much for these comments and uh, referring to our uh, colleague and friend, Dr. Jamal, from the Ministry of Education in definitely uh, we, we hope, uh, as we mentioned before, to continue the collaboration, to start the collaboration uh, with uh, the regional level, also with the regional agency, with the students, with the agency, we will be very keen uh, to, to, to try to implement uh, concretely, uh, one of these recommendations, more recommendations, thank you for your, for your participation. And uh, finally, uh, the comment of our Secretary General, Professor Penazica, um, uh, yes, uh, autonomy does not mean independence, autonomy does not mean be free. Autonomy is how we, how we perceive the relationship, how we build the relationship with our, with our ministry, of education and how we um, define our goals and objectives in a more and, uh, and broad uh, national vision of high education and a governance system in the country. Uh, so that's why it's very important to, um, to build, to work together, ministries hand in hand with universities uh, in order to define this national framework where universities can then define the strategic plans and all their, their system of, 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 of high education. Um, so I thank all of you for your attention for this uh, session and of course all of our panelists from Libya University, Dr. Abed and Libya from Australia, Professor Sawalem from Sarada University. Thank you so much. And now I give uh, the floor to my colleague and Laurence Pasolini for the second section, thematic section dedicated to university, national and international dimensions, partnership networking and contact. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can always contact the UNIMED staff and myself for the to be with also Dr. Abdelazad Kriyam, the director of the International Relations Office of the Zawiya University. And I think that Dr. Miftah El Marabat, the president, is with him, so we, we can welcome him also. I, as the time is running, I will try to be very possible. So, when talking about partnerships, networking and community is about the challenge of internationalization of universities. Internationalization of universities is an ongoing process that aims to enhance the quality of education and research for the whole community, the whole university community, students, academic staff, and administrative staff. 
الجامعية أجل المساهمة أفضل داخل المجتمع فنحن وعونا لهذه المسألة ونعمل لتحسين القدرة التشغيلية للجامعات من أجل إدراج أفضل لخرجية التعليم العالي و من أجل المساهمة في الحياة الاقتصادية ومن ثم هذه الوسائل والأدوات هي الحركية وما قمنا به في إطار برنامج أرسموس فهناك تحديات تعترضنا اللحم داخل الاتحاد الأوروبي كما تعترض أيضا الجامعات الليبية علينا تجاوز هذه العقبات وهذه الحواجز و وجد تدعيم قدرات الإطار التدريسي والإطار الإداري علينا أيضا أن نعمل على تحسين العلاقات بين الإطار التدريسي والإطار الإداري داخلي كما نقول ذلك مستوى الاتحاد الأوروبي ونعلم أن الأوضاع في ليبيا تختلف كثيرا بين جامعة ليبيا وأخرى وهذا يعني الأسباب التاريخية عندما قمنا بتحليل السوات لاحظنا عديد نقاط القوة والتي نود أن نتقاسمها معكم بالاعتماد على تجاربكم فأن التعاون بين مختلف الجامعات ترون التعاون الدولي ما يلي مع جميع الاتحاد الاوروبي والتاثير اللي كان على الجوده والتاثير على الحوكمه بتاعت الاداره Funded by other sectors, we have to create a snowball effect between all the actions that could be implemented in the universities with the cooperation of the universities, and that's why the the three recommendations we. هناك ثلاثة توصيل قمنا بها في التقرير وعلينا أن نعمل على مزيد تدعيم الجامعات الليبية من أجل تحسين رؤيتها المستوى الدولي ونعتقد أنه علينا أن نقوم برحمة بين الجامعات كما قالت زميلتي سيلفيا والدكتور عابد والدكتور سوالم 
يهمنا على مستوى التدوين أن نحدد الأهداف ونحدد الأهداف من أجل ضبط استراتيجية للتدوين وإلا لن نصل إلى الأهداف المرجوة وعلينا ألا نقوم بفتح الجامعات لي الجميعين الدينيين بل أيضا فتحها على جميع الأطراف الدوليين ويجب أيضا أن نعمل على تدريب الإطار الإداري أيضا لكون قادرا على التعامل مع التجويل ويعمل أيضا أن نرسي سياسة اتصالية ملائمة حتى تتمكن الجامعات من التواصل ومن إيصال سمرتها وصوتها ومن خلال تحليلنا الجامعه الليبيه حددنا خطتين عمليتين اثنتين اولا اعطاء البعض الافريقي للمنظومه منظومه التعليم العالي الليبيه من خلال دعم الشراكه بين الجامعات الليبيه والجامعات الافريقيه في اطار الاتحاد الافريقي For the last recommendation, I give the floor to my colleague Marco. 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 Just a few minutes before, I told us that the university has no political disagreement. And now, the university has an African dimension. So we have a very important opportunity here. Cooperate together with these opportunities of women and girls. واستخدام قدرات الجامعة الليبية لتحسين الصورة بعيدا عن أي نقاش أو جدل سياسي لتكون منصة على المستوى الدولي وعندما أفكر أو أفكر في جامعة سبعة وأشعاع على مستوى الجنوب الليبي فنعتقد أن بلدان جنوب الصحراء يمكن أن تلعب دورا هاما في هذا المجال هناك عديد الأطراف الفاعلة الأخرى التي تهتم بعديد المسائل كمسائل الهجرة وغيرها وأعتقد على المدى الطويل فأن التعاون العلمي يمكن أن يكون طريقة وأداة يمكن أن تضمن الاستقرار وأن تعمل على التخفيف الأزمة الاقتصادية والتخفيف من عبء العزلة التي تجد ليبيا نفسها ضمنها ونتمنى أنه يمكننا أو أنه يمكننا ونتمنى أن نتمكن من تشريك الأطراف الفعلية الأوروبية مع نظيرتها الليبية شكرا شكرا ماركو شكرا جزيلا أعطي الكلمة الدكتور عبد الباسط كريم دكتور كريامة الدكتور كريامة هل تستمعون إلي؟ يس نعم أستمع إليكم تستمعون إليكم؟ يس أنا أستمع إليكم جيد بلي إزا جو يا
بدايه بسم الله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله اشكركم جميعا على على الحضور واتمنى ان تكون المحاضره قيمه تستمتعوا بها اود ان اشكر في البدايه واشكر جميع and all my colleagues from the different universities Tafazal, please, he can speak. Yes, we can hear him. Hello. Yes, Dr. Kriyama, we can hear you. You can start. We can, I can hear him. He can start. Yes. Uh, I'm hearing the translation in my earphone. Switch off the English. Speak now. I'm speaking now. I'm speaking now. i Dr. Kiriyama, in, in which language do we want to speak? What is the language that you want to speak? Can you hear him? Yes, I can hear him. I, I can hear him. Okay. In the name of God. I've been asked to do Libyan It is one of the biggest universities and the oldest one goes back to 1942. We we have uh, 3,500 We have 25,000 people who study in our university. And we also have 100, more than 100 PhD candidates. The University of Zawiya has 1,800 professors and it has 2,800 employees. In our university, we have seven centers. We have the electronic Center. We have also the leadership center. When we started the internationalization of the university, we focused on the capacity of our staff in this field, and we focused on the we 
في جامعه ليبيا ما كانت بالتعامل الدولي يعني كانت تشتغل بالصوره الموجوده امامكم الان قبل 2016 كان يوجد بها ثلاثه اقسام فقط ولا تغطي المهمه ولا تغطي المهمه التي تطلق بها بتاع البعد المحلي والبعد الدولي فبعد مشاركتنا في المشاريع الدولية من 2012 إلى الآن أعتقد أن في ضعف مكاتب التعاون الدولي ويجب أن يتم تطويرها ويتم تطويرها بعد إجراء جامعة الزاوية في المشاريع الدولية تم تحديد Therefore, we have uh, defined the uh, procedures or mechanisms of uh, international cooperation. I can't hear. So our cooperation bureaus have become since 2016 more structured and uh, we, our ministries, and now is now relying on these bureaus of cooperation. So we, so we, so we are trying to, uh, um, uh, of course, use the third uh, important element that is internal internationalization. After this structuring, Azalea University was capable to produce a lot of uh, uh, partnerships and now we have more than 14 local projects. We have signed more than 27 uh, memorandums of understanding and we have more than uh, 56 uh, foreign uh, partners in uh, international projects. Uh, the University of Azawia is collaborating with more than seven uh, international uh, organizations. And here I would like to thank UNIMED for the partnerships we have with them and we would like to be partners in different and more numerous international projects in the future. In order to broaden this partnership between us and the EU, we have, have nine international projects. So, uh, including the uh, project of Erasmus. So we have. So we have a very important evolution between 2012 and 2015. We see the number of uh, partners. We, we have this slide here with these uh, different partners. And UNIMED did uh, help us uh, do the networking with the uh, European universities. And uh, we have and we have we're, we're working on international uh, on uh, renewable um, energies uh, on uh, the f in the field of journalism we also have a partnership with the eu with expertise france and we have also partnerships directly with the eu we, uh, our university also achieved a lot of, of mobility despite the, uh, uh, the, uh, the situation in Libya. We have, of course, the University of, uh, of Azawia is succeeding to uh, provide its students with uh, better conditions, especially those who are preparing their PhDs. Uh, the University of Zawiya did benefit from the international projects, and this project did uh, have an impact on its uh, uh, performances. 
in different fields and the University of Zawiya has, has opened a, a, an e-learning center and one of the objectives we have, uh, we have created, of course, uh, a, uh, an entrepreneurship uh, uh, center. In, with the project unit, uh, uh, the University of Zawiya has created a unit uh, in charge of the uh, EU projects. So this is something specific for the EU projects. Uh, we also have the uh, in-roll and the EU need the project where we have uh, from different uh, training session, sessions. Uh, uh, their objective is to upgrade, uh, upgrade the working structure of the ICO. The unit, with the, uh, uh, unit project, uh, we have, uh, we have of course, uh, uh, drafted the proposals and in 2017, uh, but, uh, we have, of course, made proposals regarding the reforms of our system. We also worked with our colleagues from the UNIMED on this. And, uh, uh, there are, of course, many, many other international projects, but the last one, uh, and brain and pages, we have the, um, reached the creation of a master's program. And in the last slide, I would like to talk about the proposals which we can focus in the future. And uh, here we can talk about the uh, safety and health occupational system in the uh, higher education in, in education institutions. There's also another project which will we will propose and it is related to the early learning capacity building. There's also the actual problem in Libya in the, and also in the Mediterranean uh, area, that is the issue of illegal migration. Um, we propose the creation of a capacity building system in illegal migration uh, centers. Uh, and we need to um, empower people who work in these centers in order to allow them to do their job in a correct way. So this is one of the important projects uh, we propose to the EU because it's a current problem. The, uh, we, there's another, another project which is also important. It's related to the capacity building in research centers in Libyan universities. There's another project where, where we need some support because we need some um, empowerment and some assistance to uh, people who have specific needs, disabled uh, students, for example. We need to uh, make a, achieve a project or execute a project of capacity building in engagement of disabled, disabled students in higher education. So these are the proposals we uh, think are uh, uh, relevant. I would like to thank you for your attention. I would like to my, uh, thank all my colleagues from the Libyan universities, uh, from the uh, UNIMED also, and I wish you all the success. Thank you very much, Dr. Kriyama. Thank you for sharing your experience and uh, the history of the Commission Office with this uh, specialized unit for EU projects. Thank you also for sharing your ideas and proposals. I just wanted to add something that I forgot to say before. 
أود أن أذكر بنقطة هامة وأن يونيماد ملتزمة بتدعيم التعاون جنوب جنوب حدثنا عن التعاون الدولي وهذا التعاون جنوب جنوب هام جدا وهو ما خبرناه في عديد بلدان جنوب المتوسط كتونس والمغرب و والمسألة لم تكن يسيرة الإنجاز ونتائج كل جميع اتفاقيات التعاون وانتقال الطلبة كانت صعبة نسبيا أعتقد أن يعني ما إذا لم تكن هناك أي أسئلة إلى زميل مارتينا زيبولي التي ستحدث عن الجماعة الليبية داخل المجتمع و التعاون داخل بين الجامعات والمجتمع الليبي شكرا قبل ان اتحدث عن التقرير اود ان اعطي كلمه الى المدير Thank you, Martina. It's a technical issues. You, we faced some problem on the all these technical issues about interpretation of the from Arabic to Arabic and vice versa. By request of our friend and colleague Ali Bakir. Uh, we are announcing if at the last part of this uh, conference of this webinar to move only to English. If you agree, we continue now just talking into English and make your questions and your intervention in English and we will continue only in English and we stop now with the interpretations. I thank obviously thank you, the interpreters for the hard work that they did because uh, I know that this is a very difficult and challenging to manage all this, but I can't ask you now to stop the interpretation that is almost done the entire conference and just to continue in English. Uh, please stop the go into interpretation button and make it off and we will continue from now just to talk and to listen in English. Again, thanks a lot to the interpreters uh, for the work done and uh, I give now the floor as Martina asked me to do to our friend uh, uh, Ali Bakir. Ali? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Very well. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, just, first of all, hello for everyone. It's not my turn to deliver my speech, I think, because uh, some other colleagues are uh, before my time. But I uh, suggest if we could start speaking English, because all the participants here, they can uh, exchange the idea in English language. Uh, second thing, I think it's good for you, Arshel, to save some money of translation. I try to keep it. <laughs> okay. Thank you is, the, is, is the money of the delegation to Libya is not That's our okay. money? Saving That's money is one of the good options as well. In any case, in any case, I think that we have to pay the translator for the the work and the time that they deliver. In any case, please go ahead, Martina, with your session. Thanks a lot. I disappear again, but I'm here with you. So here we are back again to our report, and I'd like to continue our introduction into the findings of our Libya Restart analysis and the recommendation by presenting the last part. Uh, of our research, which deals with the role 
of universities in society at large. So we have talked about governance, we have talked about quality assurance, uh, autonomy, uh, cooperation arrangements, and they are all faces of the same coin. They all relate to the university missions, which in turn defines every other aspect of the institutional life. So it, again, it implies that when we talk about the role of university in the society, of, and when we talk about their social responsibility and their capacity to contribute to the society and to dialogue with the local actors, we get back to the mission university established for themselves. So two dimensions have been our focus during the research during our um, analysis and there have been the research and the third mission of university. So our recommendation uh, number 12 um, deals with giving priority to research formulating a national research agenda. So what we understood talking with our Libyan colleagues is that Libya needs to move to a more mature research and innovation environment in the country. So universities need to be able to engage in high quality scientific research and support the definition of actions which may be able to tackle the challenges of the Libyan society. So research quantity and quality of the Libyan university are less competitive if we, if we look at European university but also some other North African countries. So there is a need to uh, engage into some, what we have defined some key milestones. So first of all, to train staff and to be able to engage in research activities and manage high quality research, to improve the management of research and innovation at the institutional level. And, but those activities need to be, um, framed into a national vision for research. So in the long run, having a national research agenda, which is developed by university in cooperation with the Ministry of Education, will be um, a framework for the research activities of university to avoid duplication of efforts and to be able to, to allow university to generate expertise and outcomes for sustainable development. And this will in turn contribute to the development of the country. As you can see from the graphic in the PowerPoint, some we have been asked, uh, we asked to our colleagues to point some of the topics that like to uh, improve and on which they like to have uh, training. And so you can see there is management in terms also of research and innovation management science and health, which we mentioned last time as well, it was a need even before the pandemic, but it becomes even more relevant nowadays. And as well, governance, as was mentioned before by my colleagues and some other topics. So research agenda is one of our recommendation. And the other one, the number 13, so our last recommendation is to enhance the social relevance of a university in cooperation with the local actors. Um, Angorans, sorry, may I ask you to change just <laughs> so we follow up with the conversation. Thank you very much. So when we talk about the role of university in the society at large, of course, we have to uh, focus on research and the capacity of the university in terms of both skilled human resources, but also the facility. But on the other hand, we have to deal also with the relation university are able to establish in their communities. So the capacity to dialogue with universities and with the decision makers to enhance their capacity to have an impact well behind, well behind delivering education. Uh, as well, we talk about the university third mission and their social responsibility, which today has not uh, a dedicated office as well as resources, as well as a focus on behalf of university. So what we would like to point out and draw attention is to dedicate resources to those 
to, to do three aspects. Research, as I mentioned before, employability, and this, the third mission. So university have been pointed out by citizens, but also by our colleagues in the Libyan University as the, one of the most, if not the most reliable institution in the country. So it has to, the reconstruction and the future of Libya, both in terms of economic growth and sustainable developments and education provided to the students and to the future generation needs to start from the reflection of university. So they have to be the starting point. They have to define a cooperation scheme with the national authorities, so with the, the schism makers, with the socioeconomic stakeholders and the actors, both internally and internationally, and make use of their resources to avoid duplication of efforts. So only through dialogue and only through mutual cooperation, the mutual definition of policies, the country can rely on, um, on, on a set of expertise and through and on a number of programs and curricula defined on the, the market needs. So employability dimension must be a priority uh, based on a strategy and tools dedicated. The relationship between university and the industry must be a win-win approach. So with the support of the Ministry of Education, the relation with the third sector can be an asset. And university already do serve the community, but they need to put their university social responsibility as a core element of their strategic planning. Um, after this brief presentation, I'd like to give the floor to two speakers in the session. First of all, Salma Buktawa, uh, our colleague from uh, the Libyan International Medical University. Thank you very much, Salma, for taking the time of contributing to our discussion. I would like to leave the floor to you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Sure, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will just give a quick talk uh, and I will uh, try to uh, go through two main points. First, I will start with the research importance of research in the Libyan community. I guess uh, research is, the, the main purpose of research is to solve problems of the society. And once the problems of the, of the society are solved, then this will lead to country uh, development or even uh, sustainability. So for example, if we are dealing with uh, health problems, uh, okay, this may differ from uh, a region to another region, okay, inside uh, Libya or from a city to another city. It, it could have, uh, it could depend on geographical location or uh, demography. Um, if we talk about uh, oil industry, uh, that's another example, okay? So from uh, my point of view, universities, in different areas should set their priorities. These priorities could be community-based priorities for research and accordingly they can start to improve their uh, capacities and they can engage at that time their students in high quality research. Uh, that's why actually when I went through the report I wasn't sure when it was written uh, that there should be a national research agenda and in between brackets in cooperation with Ministry of Education. Uh, those, those few words, I'm not sure about them. Why? Uh, because actually, if you think about it instead, uh, maybe we have to prioritize uh, our uh, research agenda, but this could be done by different universities uh, and according to different sectors. I guess the role of uh, Ministry of uh, Education could be only for communicating such priorities with the universities, okay? So the, the main idea I, I try to say in brief, um, maybe we have uh, different, uh, for each sector, we have different priorities. I mean, for example, for health, for, uh, for industry, uh, you know, in, in any other uh, uh, 
uh, speciality, we can have different research agendas, and then all agendas can be communicated by Ministry of Education. At this point, uh, I finished with the uh, research. I will just move quickly to establishing the relations with civil society or even the socio-economic stakeholders. Again, from my point of view and according to the experience of LIMO, of Libya International Medical University, establishing such relation with socio-economic uh, stakeholders should start while designing the curricula and programs. So, so that you can see that universities can design their curricula and programs that can serve the community. I, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that in Libya, a fairly small number of programs that used to get feedback uh, and chair uh, meetings with the civil society or the socioeconomic stakeholders representative while designing their curricula. They may contact them after they graduate uh, and ask about their graduates, okay, of the program, but they never uh, share uh, them in while designing their curricula. So I guess uh, this is the start point as it will open the door uh, even for the use of industry resources by universities there will be some sort of chair between industry and universities and we can be able at that point uh, we can train our students uh, or even to to get some support for our universities and of course as well this will foster um, both employability and uh, sustainability Okay, uh, I will stop here. Those are two main ideas I got from the report. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, Martina. Thanks, Marto, uh, Marco. And uh, thanks, Marcello, as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Salma, for your comments. They're very interesting comments. But one, just one note. Um, you're right when we talked about the national research agenda. We wanted to point out that inputs do not have to be top down but they can be bottom up so the experts in the field and the sectors working one on another um, domain they can um, let's say give inputs on what they believe are the priorities and all those priorities framed international agenda coordinated by the Ministry of Education. It has to be on both directions, I think. And this will allow the ministry on the one side to coordinate the efforts of the universities, but also to learn from the experts in the field how to define the agenda. And again, when you talk about the cooperation with the third sectors and with the industry, yes, our belief and our experience uh, has been that it has to be a dialogue while, since the beginning, while in the, in the definition of curricula, in the definition of the contents, so that the employability of graduates starts not at the end of their educational path, but at the beginning of it. Um, now, uh, I'd like to uh, give the floor to our second speaker in the session, Mr. Alexander Chatillon Mounier from Expertise France. He is an expert in employability and entrepreneurship, so it goes along with our discussion. And he has been working in Libya um, in the framework of the Slides Initiative, so many of you may already know him. Uh, thank you for uh, your time, Alexander. The floor is all yours. Merci beaucoup and good, um, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, warm, um, um, thank you to you guys for inviting me over and thank you um, for giving me the, the chance to express a bit of our activities. I want to extend uh, my greetings to the Libyan colleagues I, I know and I see on the, uh, on the screen. It's been a long time since I haven't seen you in Libya and I hope that uh, um, soon I'll be able to come to you. I see colleagues from the uh, Misrata University here. I'm very happy to come uh, over back to you soon. Um, very briefly, um, a word about Expertise France. So Expertise France, we're a French technical cooperation agency. Our job is to implement projects to support um, different countries, um, developing countries, war affected countries. Um, it's the case, unfortunately, of Libya, where we intervened since 2014 with the foresight of the EU. Um, so we're a donor funded organization acting mainly in Libya with a EU, French and UK funding. Um, we have a portfolio of about 20 million euros activities 
um, across uh, economic development. And we had the great chance to work with the universities of Libya now for four years, uh, three years, sorry, where we have um, supported the implementation of various things, um, including um, entrepreneurship club within the university um, on, on slides and, and EU funding. Um, then we moved to set up a small link of Pab Lab on French funding in, in the uh, six universities of uh, Libya. And um, because we had good results and it was very encouraging working with the universities, um, we're now in a third phase where we will scale up our activities and, and support the establishment of a bachelor accredited entrepreneurship diploma in the universities of Libya. Um, so my point today is not to do a lecture about what we do, um, so much than to express my um, humble opinion as expert working in Libya for quite a while on the university and on um, what we could do to support the university reaching what I do believe is the should be the main goal of the university and what is outlined in the report that you were um, you, you were presenting at the beginning of my, uh, this panel is employment. Um, indeed, university like uh, Libyan university, like in Europe, face the same problem is how do I train um, my students to get into the real life? In Libya, the, the private sector is only 4% of the GDP and the private sector is, of course, the opposite is 96% of the GDP. So, so everybody in Libya, every, youth, every young people we have the chance to work with, they want to become civil servants, but sadly, and over the past few years, it was complicated for the Libyan state to hire um, the amount of students coming up on the labor market every year. So we end up in a situation where we have a lot of students, very competent, very skilled, willing to do things, but unable to be embedded in the, um, in the labor market. So um, a few things uh, that um, we, we could do um, to, to, to help um, first, I think that the university should, the Libyan university should continue and, and enlarge their efforts in being open to the world. The Erasmus Plus program is a success and should be strengthened. Very far from my field of expertise, but I do believe that's one of the key, one of the key success. Um, most of the entrepreneurs and the Libyan entrepreneurs we are um, supporting in the, in the development of their businesses are um, high level, uh, highly graduated from uh, Libya universities with a very good level of education and um, a little open uh, minding to the world. So that should be strengthened to open a perspective for, for the Libyan youth. Um, second thing is being open to the local ecosystem. That is a, a very classical bias in which universities of the world are falling is not being open to the business world, not being open to the local economic world, but taking into account the, the progressive shift from a fully public or public dominated economy in Libya to a more open and favorable private sector led um, economy, the universities of Libya should continue to open to local businesses bringing uh, businessmen and businesswomen to share their experience in your uh, universities to um, show to young Libyans that there's another path in life than being a civil servant. And that would help the Libyan economy to thrive and to um, um, be much more balanced in uh, its diversification. So first and foremost, if I had something to say about the role, the future role of the university is to be open to the local ecosystem and bringing in uh, more civil society organizations, businessmen, chambers of commerce, bankers, allowing them to get in the, univers the university, giving them le giving lectures to students to a uh, broader perspective for Libyan students. Um, second, which is quite in line with a, what I'm saying is um, in very aligned with the recommendation of the report is um, going toward an in, uh, um, internship. Um, when you are a bachelor degree accredited uh, uh, young Libyan, you have never, you don't know what is, a, what is a business, you don't know what is a company, so you don't know whether you want to be HR, if you are interested in doing um, finance, if you, so you've studied all these things at university, but you don't know what is the real life in, in this field, in this, in this uh, job. So having an, a mandatory internship in many of your curricula would 
definitely help people to first find a job and secondly to be confronted to the private sector and the public sector. Um, third, um, I would also say based on our experience that going digital is, uh, and especially now we have this, we hold this uh, conference today and we are at the, all at a very different place and we can uh, still talk to each other. I do believe that uh, may, uh, continuing your efforts being uh, and delivering more digital uh, content to your students will definitely help reaching out um, students. And fortunately, um, it's, a, it's common sense to say that, but uh, universities are on and off open depending on the social and the war um, situation. So having a more digital approach, which would require much more investment from the Ministry of Education that could be, and I'm sorry that I say that if we have donors around the table, but that could be um, supported by international donors and going much more digital would help you um, reaching out more students and diversifying the content of your curriculum. Um, the, we've been uh, supported by the EU to launch an online business school in Libya, which is free. Th its name is Libus, L-Y-B-U-S dot L-Y. It's in Libyan Arabic with Libyan businessmen talking about their experience. Um, and this tool is made at the, is, is available to each and everyone, um, including in the universities, to spread the word about entrepreneurship. So I'm not an entrepreneurship ayatollah. My objective is not to transform everybody into an entrepreneur. My job is to make sure that we give uh, enough options for young Libyans to choose their path and to have enough intellectual material to uh, decide what they want to do. And the work we do carry all together with the universities is very promising. And I'm very happy that I was uh, part of this work and I can keep on being part of this work, thanks to the donors and the commitment of the teachers, ICO managers, and uh, president of the university. Hope I was not so boring, and the floor is back to you, my dear. Thank you very much. Thank you for pointing opportunities for the university and the dialogue with the private sector, the student internships, and the importance of going digital. They're all so relevant nowadays. So thank you so much. Um, I'd like now to give the floor to the president of the Ashdabia University, which has to uh, talk, uh, Professor Musa Mohamed. The floor is yours for any comment you'd like to share with us. Abe, is, is the president with you already? Your mic is muted, so we cannot hear you. I don't know if uh, the president of the University of, Jabi of Ashdabia can intervene, otherwise uh, hello. Okay. Hello. We can hear yes. you now. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, uh, I just have a couple of points to to add. I mean, um, I'm gonna say this. I I, I could be wrong. Okay, uh, but I think we we have um, discussed a lot of important points. Very important points. Um, development of um, Libyan universities and therefore. Um, uh, the quality of education in our Libyan uh, society. But I think we need to move from uh, talking about uh, the importance of improving uh, education um, to putting an, a, an action plan uh, to put this in practice. So uh, we don't have a clear idea about when uh, we are going to start this. So um, I'm not sure if we can have, if we can together put a um, clear timetable uh, to, to, to schedule this. The other point is um, regarding act number two. Uh, this is in the Libyan, uh, in the Libyan uh, uh, law, act number two for the year 2008, uh, regarding uh, the hierarchical framework of the Libyan universities. So uh, we have one hierarchical framework for uh, structural 
uh, framework for the Libyan universities, which should be the same for all Libyan universities. Uh, and that is um, available in uh, and the rule 501, which governs the Libyan uh, higher education system. But I think every Libyan university now has a different structural framework. Um, and that's make it, making it hard for uh, staff members, for the mobility of staff members, and also for students and uh, researchers to move from one Libyan university to another, because every Libyan university now has a different system. So uh, these are two main points, which um, I wanted to put very briefly. Um, but the most important point here is moving from uh, talking about the importance of uh, improving the quality of Libyan education uh, to a putting a concrete uh, action plan, uh, which we can uh, uh, probably start with as soon as uh, possible. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. You. Yes, this conference wants to be the starting point, not the end. And I give the floor to our director, Dr. Scalisi, for a comment. I arrive in a moment. Okay. Uh, yes, I just want to comment. We are very late, and I will be very brief about the action plan, which is an important uh, issue. Obviously, it's not the role of UNIMED to act, uh, because our role in this is to obviously to make the report, to promote these analyses. I think, and I hope that I'm not wrong, that is uh, the first analysis on the Libyan education system, uh, at least after uh, uh, Gaddafi government. And uh, I think that uh, is the starting point, as Martina said, of a huge work and discussion. But first of all, this must be done by you. Now is your turn as Libyan universities jointly with the minister, the Ministry of Education, with uh, obviously the contribution of the National Erasmus Officer and the support, of course, of the EU delegation to Libya to define your priorities and to define your action plan. We are with you totally to support you in this process. We are with you to work with you to define the, the most important priorities according to the recommendation and to define the action plan jointly. But the initiative must be in your hands. I'm sure that not only the, EU, the EU, uh, European Commission, but also other international players, we invited today other internationally important organizations like they are the expertise France, uh, British Council, and many others, Campus France, and so on, that following the report and following your action plan, they will try to answer to, to your needs and priorities. And we will, we will be with you to define this strategy, but again, now the work must be uh, uh, in your hands in your hands, in your idea, and your strategy. I know that the situation is complicated, obviously, but I think that in some way we can move, shweya, shweya, or step by steps, we can move from analysis to action with your important contribution. Thank you to our director, and uh, I'd like to immediately give the floor to my colleague Marco Di Donato for the last session on the needs and challenges and opportunities of the Libyan higher education system. Marco, the audience is all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that we are all a little bit tired after so much time passed online, so I will immediately give the floor to Mr. German uh, Bernard Rios from VG Education and uh, Youth, Sports and Culture. I don't know if uh, uh, Mr. Germavius can hear us and his... Yes, hello, can you yes. hear me? Thank you very much for having uh, with the 
the, uh, for all this time and thank you very much for having me being here with us. So the floor is yours and uh, please. Thank you very much, Helen from Brussels, to everybody and to our friends in Libya. Thanks to the UNIMED for organizing this excellent webinar, which uh, I was looking forward to for a long time as a real conference, let's say, but uh, it's not possible at this moment, so it's good that we have this initiative for the webinar. I just want to remind to all our Libyan friends about, uh, you know very well, the Erasmus Plus program, uh, which we manage from Brussels. It's an excellent tool for you to use. It's a single entry point for you to cooperate with 33 European countries and also with some countries in your region as well. You can use Erasmus Plus to cooperate with a large number of countries. It's something uh, very different from bilateral cooperation. So it's, it's really excellent. Uh, please think also long term. Uh, the, the situation in Libya now is difficult, we all know, but the new Erasmus program will run from 2021 to 2027. Many things can happen in this period. Hopefully, a cooperation is going to be easier. Uh, uh, you know, things could improve and we have to be ready. Libya has to be ready to step in. It is our interest to keep the program alive, to keep uh, some level of cooperation at least for the time being. Uh, we always have some capacity building actions with Libya, some mobility activities with Libya. I hope that in the future, 2021 to 2027, we can have much more. Remember also that mobility does not only concern students, it also concerns staff. It's very important at this moment that some staff from Libya can travel to Europe to participate in mobility and hopefully Libya can also host some staff, they can go there for teaching, they can go there for training. And when it comes to the students, remember also that we have activities like uh, trade mobility, it's mobility for studies, but also traineeships. You can think in the future, some of Libyan students could uh, travel to Europe to participate in traineeships and vice versa. Now think long term. We don't know where we will be in 2022, 2023, 2024. But the universities have to establish uh, partnerships, have to establish links with Europe to, to be able to cooperate. Remember, we also have Erasmus Mundus. Any Libyan student can apply by himself, by herself, to participate in, in a master's degree in Europe. That's something that they earn by themselves, really. And also, we have the fantastic tool of capacity building for higher education. It's very important, uh, you know, that uh, both from a structural point of view and from a point of view of the challenges that the universities have, Europe and Libya and the South Med countries as well cooperate to tackle the challenges. Really, it's, it's a bottom-up country. Today we have talked talk a lot about governance, but we have projects in curriculum development. We have all sorts of projects. You decide what you need. You have to explain why it's important, why you can only do it with the European support, and then there are many possibilities open. And we are lucky to have in Libya a National Erasmus Plus office, which will support you locally in your efforts to, to participate in the program. Uh, I stop here because I think everything else was said in the webinar. And thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very intense intervention and speech. I have to say that this is one of the, Libya is a country where we saw and we are uh, with our eyes the impact of the capacity building action. Uh, and uh, as the University of Zalga showed before, uh, we saw evolution in the last years. And we saw universities starting uh, as beginners in the field of Erasmus Plus. And then now after four years, five years, now they are really working in a very experienced way and they are proposing themselves directly. Uh, this uh, new proposal, new projects, they are con constantly stimulating us. And in this regard, I would like to give the floor then immediately to Professor Antonio Maria Morona, uh, professor from the University of Pavia. Uh, I know that all the Libyans already know you, so you don't need any kind of uh, detailed introduction. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, you have uh, from six to eight minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marco, and greeting from Pavia, Lombardy, in Italy. Uh, let, me, let me thank uh, UNIMED staff and UNIMED General Director Marcello Scalisi for organizing this very interesting and important meeting. Uh, 
And let me also uh, thanks to all the Libyan colleagues for, uh, for coming and for participating to the meeting. Um, I try to be very briefly because uh, we are a, bit, a little bit on late. Um, I was working and doing my research as a historian, a contemporary historian in Libya since 2008, before the, um, before the revolution. And uh, from 2008 up to now, I get the opportunity to be in touch and to collaborate with more than one uh, Libyan institution and Libyan university. Uh, for example, the main collaboration from my university, Pavia University, and uh, uh, the Tripoli University, and uh, also the collaboration with the uh, National Center for Modern Languages based on Tripoli, also the collaboration with the Marca Sajiad Libyan that now is called uh, uh, the National Libyan Archives, uh, and more recently, the uh, University of Misurata. Um, I think that uh, Libya is, uh, is a very challenging country for uh, the international collaboration and cooperation, especially from, for, you know, from, from uh, the Italian side. So the history of relations between Italy and Libya is a long history sometimes very troubled during the colonial time, but also very strange, very productive in post-colonial time. I think that uh, according uh, to the uh, Libyan report uh, from, uh, from UNIMED, uh, I agree upon that the two main problems uh, of Libyan university system now is the fragmentation and possibly an uh, overwhelming and unchecked privatization of the system. I think that the, the, the public system of education is still a very important value for the Libyan society, of course, not only for the Libyan society. And I think that it's very important to face this uh, challenging on fragmentization and privatization of the Libyan uh, academic system. Uh, I think also that it's very important to improve uh, the research in the uh, Libyan University. Uh, once again, according to the uh, Libyan, uh, uh, to the UNIMED report on Libya, uh, the activity on research uh, uh, at the Libyan University is less in comparison, is little in comparison with the uh, activity of teaching. And I think that is very important to try with our international cooperation to include the Libyan researcher in broader uh, and international network of research, uh, not only European, of course, but also in the Maghrib region, or let me say in the Mediterranean region. Um, the research has to be improved, uh, and also the outreach of university has to be uh, also improved. I completely agree with uh, my uh, colleague Salma when she was uh, telling us that the university have to help uh, to solve or try to help to solve uh, the problem, the current problem of the Libyan society. So the mission of university could, in Libya, especially in Libya, could, could not be only research and teaching, but also uh, to play a role in, uh, in the Libyan society and try to foster precondition for achieve the peace for the country. Uh, I close my very short uh, remarks uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, some potential fields uh, where the cooperation could be very profitable for both sides of European and Libyan side. I think that once again, the working on internationaliz internationalization of research possible and then also uh, the uh, 
the field of uh, health could be also another point that is very important nowadays in Libya. Uh, of course, Libya is facing a real uh, health emergency in, due to the war. And I think that the university has a main role in trying to solve the problem in the health sector, not only in provide healthcare, but also in providing a quality of uh, teaching in the health sector and uh, governance for the uh, health emergency. And also I think that migration could be another migration and at the same time, employability could be another point, another field where the collaboration between a Libyan university and European university could be very profitable. We have not to think about migration in terms of uh, camps, uh, uh, camps of uh, internment uh, or containment uh, policies, but we have to work uh, for uh, you know, for understanding migration as a possibility, an opportunity to work, work together, uh, Libyan, Libyan, Libyan people, Libyan workers with foreigners worker. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Antonio, and especially on, on these last two points. Uh, of, uh, we also in the report uh, highlighted the need of intervening in the health sector. It was very clear from the spider chart that my colleagues uh, showed before. And also on the issue of the migration, uh, University of Zawiya asked us in the past months to work together on migration. And also we have, I guess, IOM, uh, the International Organization of Migration among the attendees. So probably we can uh, set up a, a, a work group together on, on, this, on this point. And then last but not least, Mr. Ali Bakir, the National Erasmus Office in uh, the, the coordinator and representative of the National Erasmus Office in Libya. Uh, Ali, the floor is yours. No, you have to unmute your mic. The mic, the mic is still muted. Yes, me, you. Okay, can you hear me? What? <laughs> okay, can you hear me, everyone? Perfect. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would say I would like to say hello to all my colleagues here today and uh, I would like to say thank you to all contributors to this uh, significant and important report that are leading by UNIMIT team. And also I would like to thank you uh, all my uh, colleagues from Libyan University who show interest and uh, important uh, contribution to the statistical data that has been presented in this report. Uh, first of uh, before I'm going to start the discussion, I would like to mention that I will just take a short time to deliver my speech and notes because this session is uh, the longest classroom I have been attended since I started studying in the school. So three hours and a half, I think. I've never been doing it again. However, uh, I would like to mention three important issues. The first one is digitalization to all my colleagues and uh, part, uh, partners, digitalizations became one of the most concerned about uh, partnership and cooperation between Libyan local partners and international organizations. This also could include online uh, learning, online training, online research, and online dialogue and conference and meeting as well which is we already have a case to study today. I think this is one of the good examples that we could do a lot by adopting digitalization approach to the higher education institutions and system in Libya. Uh, 
the positive, the second positive point uh, during my meeting with the Ministry of Education uh, during this week, yesterday, we reviewed some technical issues in the Libya restart report, and it was really positive uh, and uh, indicated that the Ministry of Education is really interested to develop this report in the com future coming uh, months. And they adopt the approach that has been conducted to collect the data and to be used as a tool, as a tool and base a stone for the next stage of the report in, 21, in 2021. Which means that for our colleagues from UNIMED, we are more than happy to receive all the tools and questionnaires, the surveys and the qualitative approach you conducted and the analysis uh, process you used to uh, finalize this report in the, in the way that we have we having now. The, the Ministry of Education think that this report could be used as a basis stone and updated every year and to be published as one of a references to the data about higher education in Libya. So we are hopefully see more cooperation and more opportunities to be engaged together in this report later on. And the last, uh, I couldn't focus more because three and a half hours, it's kill all my cells. Just I need to write it down and remember every point. So it's uh, in ministry, okay, line. Okay, I think this is, uh, yes, regard, uh, the later, the last point is regarding to the Erasmus Plus contribution and management issues which is I would like to take this opportunity is to ask all my colleagues and partners and Ministry of Education representative here to take serious support for Erasmus Plus activities and projects and to make wider interaction and integrated projects between local universities and international stakeholders and uh, reviewing some important issue regarding to the project management, such like funding uh, management, uh, legalization and regulations that related to the Libyan local universities. And it's kept a challenge for many local universities to be able to continue having more opportunities to engage in such projects. Finally, I would like to say thank you for everyone who participated, engaged, supported, contributed to this very good project and I would like to see more interaction and more initiatives from not only UNIMED, but also from our local universities and our researchers as well, because we are here to help and we are here to support. We are here as a part of all this higher education family that we are doing the best to see everything is going smoothly and uh, the goals achieved by all of our teams. The final, I would like to mention that the next stage of Erasmus Plus, it seems that will be more focused on virtual and electronic and digital phase. So I recommend all my local colleagues from Libyan universities and all partners to give more space for digitalization projects and virtual cooperation to develop a new approach and a new infrastructure for being in connect with what is going to be in the next uh, coming years in 2021 specifically. Every project we are doing now, we could develop it to be more digitalized and uh, active on the virtual uh, pace. Thank you very much and uh, hopefully that I made this contribution useful for everyone today. Thank you very much, Ali. Uh, Thank you very much for everything and also for the uh, for the intervention. And now I give the floor to my colleague Ramiro Kelly for the last session. I don't know if there are questions and contributions. So Ramiro, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marco. It is a great honor uh, to take the floor after, as my friend uh, Ali said, the longest uh, lesson that we have never attended <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure that all of you want to go back to have uh, coffee lunch or whatever so I won't be I won't be long 
uh, I have, uh, I think, the honor of being the, the last one because I'm by, I'm by far the oldest person in Unimed. <laughs> And then uh, I have uh, a very long experience, long-term experience in, in dealing with, uh, <clears throat> with Southern Mediterranean countries. Uh, there have been many, many uh, uh, issues which have been raised. I think one of the most interesting and, and critical one is uh, uh, about autonomy, which is something that all universities are, are, are looking for, are trying to have uh, in principle, the central authorities are normally in favor of autonomy, but then in the implementation, there's, uh, there are lots of, of problems. And uh, because we deal with uh, many different countries, we have seen how much uh, the national policy can, can vary, can change, even uh, between uh, uh, neighboring countries like, like uh, with, the, with Tunisia and with, with Egypt in the case of Libya. So if, if uh, there are uh, any, any questions, any comments that you would like to make on this or just, this was just an example on any other uh, uh, issue that you would like to, to, to raise about what has been said, you can, you can raise your hand and, uh, and, uh, and ask a question. Uh, I don't know why we wait for some questions. Uh, Marcello, do you want to to add something or, or do you have a question? <laughs> I, I have a comment on what uh, Ali said, but first of all, I would like to know if uh, we have with us uh, uh, the, the, the project officer for Libya, uh, Mr. Clivio Casali from the agency, the EHA. I don't know if we are. He would like to say something is if he's still with us because I know that he's very late. Or uh, in addition, uh, if the Antonis uh, Tsamolis from the EU delegation want to say something. Now we have Clivio. Clivio, the floor is yours. Please. Clivio, Clivio is still alive, still, uh, still awake. Awake. Yeah. Bravo, Clivio. It's I just, just, uh, it's I was, just to test your capacity. <laughs> I, I started. I took the liberty to start cooking something, but uh, <laughs> okay. but uh, I've been here all the time. Well, thank you for giving me for giving me the opportunity. I think it was very interesting. Um, I personally, I can only uh, echoes what uh, Herman uh, said. Uh, before I had the opportunity to follow Libya since the very beginning, I was there also when it was the moment to establish the, the National Erasmus Plus office. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ali Baker knows how uh, uh, amusing and uh, it has been uh, during uh, the entire year to establish the office. From our side, from the technical perspective, we try to favor the implementation of the projects by applying all possible flexibility. The, we know there are some concrete uh, hinders and difficulties that everybody has to face uh, when it comes to very, very technical questions like uh, shipment of equipment or rather than payment of staff costs, etc. I don't want to go down to, to the to technical details. The, the message I can say that uh, we uh, recently reached the end of this long experience on uh, capacity building in Erasmus Plus. We are uh, about to finish the last uh, call for proposal. Very soon there will be the, the results will be available. Um, we are happy to see that the cooperation with Libya will, uh, will continue, has continued uh, quite positively. And by trying to diversify a bit the thematic that they were tackled during the, the different years. So we started by tackling mostly the refurbishing or um, re refreshing of the international office to uh, enlarging to a different uh, set of thematic like journalism or energies or other, other topics related to research. Let's just hope that uh, with the launch of the new program, we will uh, be able to reinforce this, uh, this opportunity and, and explore uh, other, other domain of cooperation. The, I'm just stopping here because uh, we're all getting angry. Thank okay. you, Marcello. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Clivia. Anyway, thank you for the support that you have given during the last years this project with Libya, which were, of course, uh, uh, extremely challenging. Uh, we, as you said, we had to face also many, some many practical uh, uh, issues and problems. Uh, talking about the European Commission, would uh, uh, our delegate from the European Commission like to, to say some words uh, as a closing remarks? Is, is he still with us? Yes, Antonis? You have to, yeah. I'm still with you, uh, and uh, I would like to thank you for giving the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Perfect. So I will be the, I think the last one, so I will not keep you for long. I would like to thank the UNIMED uh, uh, and the Libyan universities and the Ministry, uh, the ministry of uh, Education for this uh, joint effort uh, to this report. I think it's a, it is a very important uh, piece of work. It gives us a very solid basis to organize uh, both as donors, but also as uh, you su I suppose as domestic uh, counterparts in Libya, the further steps. Uh, we very much look forward to to see what are your specific priorities you would like to set in the, the steps forward. We are here to do see the conditions upon which we can accommodate some of these some of these priorities. Uh, for me, the two key important takeaways would be um, the digital aspects of education. This is certainly something that can transform the way we learn and interact not only within our countries but also internationally. And the second point is, of course, uh, uh, the, I, I would like to encourage you to look into the possibility of uh, creating internships as part of the, of the curriculum, of the studies. Uh, this is a very important learning process for, for students and can have a defining uh, effect on, on their later choices in life. Uh, myself, having been uh, given this opportunity as a student, I have to say that, you know, to a large extent, it has been decisive to my later job decisions. And of course, uh, there are many open, open fronts for, uh, and challenges, and we are here to discuss with you on a more concrete basis uh, and see how our bilateral programs can accommodate your priorities. Once again, thank you very much, uh, and uh, we stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Antonis, for your, for your contribution. Uh, so just uh, one, one, uh, one closing remark before giving, before giving the floor to, to our director. Uh, as I always say, uh, Unimed works basically at two levels. One is the institutional level, the lobby level, trying to create uh, a contact, a bridge between uh, uh, the Mediterranean universities and the policymakers, and this is today's meeting, I think was an example of this. But the other uh, way we work is at the practical level. We try to support you in accessing uh, your internationalization, internationalization process, especially through such tools as uh, the Erasmus Plus program. But in order to do that, we need to know what are your needs, what are your expectations, what are the things that you need to do in order to improve uh, uh, the, the functioning of your university system. So please don't hesitate to come up. And of course, uh, with this study, we have uh, dug into these kind of, 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 of issues, but uh, we always need your inputs uh, uh, about uh, uh, interesting project that we'd like to set up. And this is the start of a process which hopefully brings us to be able to support and to ask the Commission to support you in this process. So thank you very much for your patience and I'll give the floor to Marcello for some closing remarks. Okay, thank you very much Raniero and uh, thank you very much for, to all of you for your very long and hard participation. I have just very brief comments. Uh, about, first of all, the, the, the two requests coming from Ali Bakir about digitalization for sure is something we have a, a lot of initiative on this that we are doing during this Unimed week in Brussels online uh, discussing about the impact of COVID-19 and digitalization of uh, university activity and uh, I think that this in some ways uh, in this crisis we will have some opportunities and for sure, we will do our best to, 
analyze, to investigate what is necessary to do in the Libyan higher education system about digitalization. And I hope that soon we will be able to come back to you with some proposal. About the, the report, uh, we are ready not only to update the, the data, as I mentioned at the beginning, and this could be done by the end of the year, the year but uh, we could uh, prepare a, 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 a Libya Restart 2.0 version. Why not jointly this time with the, minister, with the ministry, as you said, not only to transfer the data that we already collected, which is obviously we don't have any problem to do that, but to do this work jointly with the ministry because with this uh, uh, allow the report to be more complete, to involve also the other universities that unfortunately didn't participate in this first version and so on. Why not join forces to work together because UNIMED is starting this initiative to analyze and to publish a report on our education system in, in the Mediterranean region. And, and I, I think that the Libya Restart report is uh, the first one for UNIMED, but we will be, uh, I hope that soon we will have many, many others. Uh, three elements to conclude from my perspective after listening to my colleagues and, uh, and your comments. Uh, as Raniero said, priorities. We have to work all together on priorities, the recommendations that we provided. You have to underline your uh, important needs, obviously discussing with our partners and, and colleagues from both sides of the Mediterranean. And we could answer today's priorities in three main issues. By projects, as Erasmus Plus capacity building, but many others, also Horizon Europe, the next Horizon program on research, and so on. But first of all, projects. Another important topic, as was mentioned in the session on uh, uh, the international dimension, is that you must be able at university level to define your strategy about internationalization and why not to define this strategy also at national level, not only coming from the ministry. And then I think that is an important tool that was advocated by our friend and colleagues uh, from the EU delegation, Antonis Tsamoulis, is to talk, to discuss in a bilateral dimension with the EU delegation, because you, as Libyan uh, education system, you have to define your priorities and to address to the EU delegation your priority list to try to have a bilateral discussion with them to, to answer to this priority. This is an important tool, and the university has to play an important role on that. The leader of the university is us to define altogether their priorities, if you need our help, of course, with pleasure, and then address to these priorities through the ministry to the EU delegation and the European Commission itself. As you remember, Mr. Cozzolino from the Parliament said at the beginning, that we are ready, they are ready to support your needs and your priorities. In this sense, I think that also the role of the European Parliament is very important to give also the European Commission the possibility to say, okay, this is a political priority. It's not just a list that you have done to, to about your needs and so on. Uh, it was a very long webinar, I know that, and uh, this afternoon we will continue with another webinar discussing about future skills with the European Training Foundation, another important uh, webinar, but I confirm our interest to continue with you this discussion through webinars at the moment, time by time, on some very small and specific topic, to have a webinar, obviously smaller than this, but obviously uh, with some focus important for all of us. And now it's time to thank all of you for your participation again. Thanks to the ministry. I didn't hear the voice of our friend Sultan Salem, but I thank him uh, a lot for his uh, contribution to the, uh, this uh, results. He, he worked with us a lot to achieve this result. And I thank also all the UNIMED uh, team for the work that they, uh, they are doing 
for this report and and not only and of, of course uh, thank you all all of you again for your active participation and now i wish you a very good lunch break at least thank you very much and see you soon see you soon hopefully inshallah in presence in in tripoli inshallah thank you very much bye bye bye, bye.